fired up. It's getting fired up. Okay, we're live. Woo! Welcome back to the Big Daddy Gun Studios. I'm Hank Strange. We are live, obviously, Big Daddy Gun Studios. We're in Gainesville. We have a special guest on the show tonight. This gentleman, Shane, the late Boy Scout. What's up? Joining How us. Doing? Good, good. Joining us live from Utah. That's right. And he's got some guns in the background. I got a couple. Got some yeah. in the background, some on the table, some yeah. stuff for cutting things, and exactly. Yeah, I'm here, man. I'm ready to go. Right. So this is gonna be this is gonna be fun. So I'm gonna invite you guys right now. Hit us up with your questions here, and we'll try to answer as many questions from the late Boy Scout myself. We'll talk about whatever. Obviously, we're gonna talk about guns and knives and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But whatever you guys want to talk about, or whatever we feel like talking about, we will pretty much. Yeah, we will have that conversation. Don't forget to share this video out to your friends. Let them know that we're here. Let them know Lake Boy Scout is here and ready to answer. So, um, I, you know, before we do that, Scout, do you mind uh, like telling the folks out there who've never heard of you? <laughs> That's probably like at least one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, tell them who you are, how you started doing YouTube, man. Yeah, sure. My name's Shane. I run the Late Boy Scout channel. I uh, live here in Utah. And um, gosh, I guess as far as like content, it's it's guns. It's a lot of guns, at least this summer it has been. Okay. With, um, a lot of knives. It's been a lot of knives over the years. It's been like seven, going on eight years, I think, that I've been running the channel. So um, yeah, just, you know, guns and knives are kind of what I've been interested in for a good long while. Uh, got into it sort of just before um, just before starting the YouTube channel, maybe a few years before starting the YouTube channel is when I sort of started getting into guns and knives and, and all that stuff. And I remember you and I had a conversation about that one time, right. uh, how one thing that you and I really have in common is that we're sort of both late to the gun lifestyle. Right. right? Absolutely. Because so, uh, usually people start this when they come out the womb, right? There's right. a lot of gun guys like, out there oh, like yeah, that. I fired my first 22 when I was, you know, before I could walk. You know, you hear a lot of yeah. those. Things. That's awesome. But that wasn't me. Right. Uh, so it was much later in life that I kind of got into some of this stuff uh, or sort of got back into it, you know, because I'd been in Boy Scouts and all that stuff as a kid, um, had exposure to some of this stuff, but none of it really stuck. And I didn't have time for it. Came from a big family, not a lot of money to go around. So we didn't have time for a lot of a lot of cool stuff like this. Um, and so it wasn't until later in life that I started when I started having my own kids. And I'm like, you know, they need to be exposed to some of this stuff and I need to get the knowledge and the learning to be able to expose them to it as their father. And so that's kind of where it all began. And uh, the YouTube channel sprang up from that a little while later. But uh, yeah, it's been seven, eight years now and still having fun. Yeah, and you're, and you're kicking, kicking butt out there. And that's where the uh, name The Late Boy Scout comes from, right? I'm sure people ask you this all the time. I know I, I have before. Yeah, that what I just told you there is pretty much it that's where it where it came about that, that and also you probably remember the movie uh the last boy scout yes that? uh, th that's a bruce willis movie right bruce willis and yeah. damon williams as i remember right and, yes yes um yes. i don't know why but that movie kind of had an impression on me when i was like in high school and stuff and so when i was thinking about how to you know how to brand my channel so to speak uh that term kind of came to mind but i thought the last boy scout sounded a little pretentious so I looked for other ways. <laughs> yeah, because you will be hearing from the Boy Scouts, which is a lot of them. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. So I started thinking about other ways to use that. The late Boy Scout came to mind, and it just made sense. And so that's what I stuck with. Yeah, and that's a good that's a good movie, too. That's like one of those uh, kind of like a formula movie for Hollywood, oh, for right? Sure. You know, sure. like a buddy kind of movie. And oh, I yeah. think Bruce Willis was the cop, I guess, which, is a, which has been used. I and then... So. Damon Wayans was what, like a criminal or? Yeah, it was a little bit of a something. I, I don't remember exactly what the what the dynamic was yeah. there, but it was something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot like Forty Eight Hours, I think, and um, yeah, there's a few other movies. Beverly Hills out there. Cop maybe uh, yeah. had a lot of that sort of formula to it. Um, yeah. some others like that, but yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if you're a movie guy. I talk to I, a uh, lot of gun guys. You are right. Yeah. Yeah, so am I. You know, there's some gun guys out there that are too busy to be into movies, but I'm into movies, so we mm -hmm. that's something we could talk about. Uh, have sure. you seen any good movies lately? I talk to I, a lot of gun guys. You are, right? Uh, yeah, so am I. You know, there's some gun guys. Sorry, I got a little delay because I, I clicked on the video. So oh, yeah, you got to yeah, you gotta you gotta mute, mute it. That. There we go. <laughs> that's, that's cool. <laughs> that's all right. All right. Um, yeah. 
What have I seen lately that I've enjoyed? Let's see. Um, you know, I'm into the Marvel movies. A lot of people kind of diss on yeah. those because they're a little, I don't know. The, the, the studio that, that makes them is very, you know, progressive and all that stuff. Not really on the same political page as us, but at yeah. the same time, it's like, I get that and I agree with that. And that's true. It's like, and that's, and that's kind of a sore spot for me. But at the same time, it's like, I grew up with a lot of comic books. And so seeing a lot of that stuff come to life nowadays is like, um, yeah, the, the technology is actually caught up. They've tried to do, um, they've tried to do the superhero movie thing before. Yeah. And some, you know, some of it has been good considering the technology they had back in the eighties and yeah. uh, early nineties. But nowadays, man, you could pretty much do anything. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it really comes down to, yes, there is a lot of programming in there where they're trying to brainwash us, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't make, they're still fun, though. There's still some yeah. of them that are enjoyable. There's still a ton of fun, and you know what, you can look past a lot of, I can anyway. I can kind of, I can separate, you know, the, the actor from the art, and I can separate, you know, the studio even from the, you know, mm -hmm. the characters, and I can, I can do that in my head, and I can go, okay, this portion of it, that sucks, and I'm, I don't like uh, listening to that or whatever, but at the same time, it's like the whole thing in, in general is just fun to me, and so I enjoy it. But uh, yeah. aside from that, there's a lot of, like I said, there's a ton of those sort of comic book style movies that I enjoy, but man, the John Wick movies, how about those? Oh, those are awesome. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> one and two, man, I think two was, uh, two was just as badassery as, you know, like you would think, okay, two is not going to be as good, but they, they stepped it up in two. They stepped think, it up what do you think? Uh, I thought that number one, it just kind of came out of nowhere and was just amazing. Yeah. And Keanu Reeves, I kind of have um, uh, when I when I look at him as an actor, you know, I kind of I kind I keep always going back to number one, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and then number two, Point Break, which was you know I am an FBI agent, that whole thing, the Johnny Utah character. So Keanu Reeves for me is like I'm I'm kind of on board with him as a as an actor and sometimes mm -hmm. kind of not but but the John Wick movies were great. Yeah. I mean, well, Keanu, Keanu has he's he's matured, right? Keanu's yeah. matured over the years. Yes. He's yes. like a very humble guy nowadays. I don't I don't oh, ever remember hearing him being like one of those messed up Hollywood dudes. No, that's true. That is true. So, and, and so, he's a he's a good, nice guy, and he's been doing some some serious uh, training. Um, yeah, Taran Tactical, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we did we did a gun fu video. I don't know if you've done any videos on it. Some gun guys have been doing stuff because it's cool. Yeah. What's your favorite gun scene in John Wick One? I know um, mine. I'll tell mine first while you're thinking ahead, about it. That'll think help you out. Go ahead. Go ahead. The the. The the scene that blows me away, there's a scene with uh with a KSG. <laughs> okay. Yeah, where I think the bad guys had a KSG and he somehow gets it from them and they're running away and he just tears the living shit out of those guys <laughs> with a KSG, man. And you know, I mean, it's possible with a KSG, dude. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I mean, this is one that is one of the only shotguns where uh it actually behaves like movie shotguns behave. You know, yeah, going yeah. and going. Yeah, this that scene is towards the end of the movie. I don't know how many, but to me, that's the. There's a lot of good scenes in there. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in there that sticks out. But yeah, I can't think of one because I have the KSG. You know what I mean? So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah uh, I, you know. I cannot think of one scene in particular. Yeah. From that. What I, about I, two? From two, um, some of the funniest stuff was when towards the end, when uh, just people just started popping up out of the woodworks to go after yeah. him. You know, yeah. you heard phones buzzing left and right and people right. all over the place. And it was a little yeah. bit like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you had to suspend disbelief in a sense because you're like, yeah, right. Like, no, but, no, but this is an alternate right. universe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everybody in New York is, is in reality a, a killer. Really? Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, whatever. But yeah. You had, to, you had to kind of jump past that and accept that first. But yes. once you do, it, it was fun, you know, because it yeah. was like you saw him sort of jump from one killer to the next to the next to the next. But he was also like they kind of jumped between scenes like so they would jump back a scene and forward a scene and back a scene and forward a scene right. and back a few scenes and forward a few scenes and so mm -hmm. that was kind of fun to see him like deal what with one in bits and pieces mm -hmm. so those scenes were fun to watch uh the guy the big heavy guy um that was like he shot him like eight times or something then finally shot him in the head but then he got up again <laughs> that guy <laughs> uh that was that, that was that towards the end yeah it was towards the end it was like a big yeah big Japanese guy or something is like massive sumo guy or something. Oh yeah. I think, okay. Yes. Um, I don't know if that was in the mirror thing. I don't want to mess it up for anyone. Cause I don't know oh, if okay. everyone's seen it yet. 
Okay. Was that what was that in the museum? No, it was it was like it wasn't in was the that, museum. It was out it was outside, but it was like when it was right at the point when all the killers started coming after him at once. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, oh yes, I do know who you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. This was like in not in the subway, but on the streets or something like that. Yeah, it was yeah. on the street. The dude like yeah. walked up to him and had like two chicks on his arm and then Yeah, like, the dude yeah, he looked like a like a superhero or something. Like <laughs> yeah. you know those like you know how there's superheroes in Marvel that are big fat dudes, but it's not really fat, it's supposed to be all yeah. muscle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or something. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of who was like that. There's there's a bunch of them. The blob. Well, no, the not the blob. Um oh shoot. Kingpin. <sighs> Kingpin, yes, Kingpin was. Like that. He was supposedly yeah. like that. Have you watched the Kingpin from uh, Netflix or sorry? So the now here's uh, well, here's the thing, man. I don't like the Netflix Marvel stuff. No, no, I don't. Okay, I don't. I, no, I've, not, I've, I've I've watched it, but but there's two like Daredevil, for yeah. example, <laughs> is just annoys me. You know, I agree with what you said <laughs> earlier that you have to suspend some of this, but Daredevil is just too annoying because you see dudes with guns in close quarters shooting at him and they're all missing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's the same yeah. thing with uh with the arrow. Okay. You know? Yeah. The one, the one that I like the best out of the Marvel stuff <laughs> is um uh Legends, you wanna say? Is it, yeah. yeah, it's Legends, I think it's called. Uh, that one's that one's DC. Okay. Oh well, there you go. But yeah, that's probably why. <laughs> my, kids, my kids watch that one. I have not watched that one. To be honest, yeah. I don't really get into the DC stuff that much. I've watched like oh, the, excuse I've watched hating, Man of Steel. You're hating on I've DC. Watched, I, I, I'm not trying to hate on DC. I'm just telling you what I think, dude. It's like I'm just trying to make trouble for you. you know, so, um, like the the Batman v Superman, I watched that. It was kind of lackluster to me, but I mm. enjoyed it. Um, I saw Wonder Woman with my wife. I thought that was pretty good. Wonder. Okay, I haven't seen Wonder Woman yet. Um, I like I like the woman that plays Wonder Woman. I think she's attractive, yeah. but yeah. she's not like as good a Wonder Woman as I would like. She doesn't have enough muscles. Um, she's too. She's too. She's. She, I know she's a badass in real life, and she does right, all kinds of right, crazy right. stuff yeah, and all that. Idea. She's probably a little bit too tall, so you don't see the like. I won't want Wonder Woman to. I don't want her to be over muscled. Okay. Don't get me wrong, you know. Yeah. But I want Wonder Woman to have like a little bit more muscle. Yeah, like maybe some chick that goes to CrossFit or something. Yeah, I want to feel like she can actually kick my ass. Okay. You know? <laughs> I want her to feel like a little bit dangerous. I'm okay. not saying that chick, you know, knows. I think it, I was reading about her. She yeah. really does some kind of martial arts and everything. So she could probably kick my ass if she has enough time <laughs> in real life. <laughs> right. You know. Um, uh, I don't. I didn't have any complaints about her. Uh, Gal Gal Gadot, I think, was her name. Yeah, Gal, yeah, Gal Gadot or something like. Yeah, that. She's I attractive. Didn't. She's been in a bunch of movies. No, she's t she's attractive, and she's. Uh, I I felt like it's just as far as presence was concerned. You know, she's tall. Yeah. She's got. She's got a really good presence, and so for me, for that, you know, for for me, that's kind of more key than her actual physique, even mm -hmm. though the physique was pretty important, given that she's a superhero. Yeah. Um, but you can't yeah. get perfection. I mean, you know what? Have you seen? Did you see the last um, the last Mission Impossible movie? I can't remember the name of the actress in there, but the one where um, she was riding motorcycles and stuff like that. Yeah, I think I. Yeah, I saw it. I'm trying to remember the. Uh, yeah, I can't remember her name right now, but she's yeah. got a little bit more muscle tone, but I'll tell you why. She's actually a little shorter. So that's okay. the thing with Wonder oh, yeah. Woman, I think. I think Gal Gadot has like, because Wonder Woman is supposed to be like a little tall. Oh, yeah. Like she's yeah. an Amazon. They're supposed yeah. to be tall warriors, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, you know. that, But the girl oh. from, uh, mm -hmm. from Mission Impossible, she's like Tom Cruise's height, and he's... Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, Tom Cruise not a tall dude. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, so that's the thing, man. You know, this is the uh, this is the 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 balance that we have to have. But it looks like a good movie. I just haven't been to see it. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, have you uh, have you checked out Shooter, TV series? No, I haven't. Is that good? Okay. Yes, it's very good. Okay, so I'm on Netflix. I've got that actually downloaded to my phone right now. I watch mm -hmm. episode by episode every now and then. Um, so did you see the movie, the original movie with uh, Mark Wahlberg? Uh, with Marky Mark, yes, I have yeah. seen that a few times. Did you like yeah. it? Um, a few yeah. Times. yeah, you know, it's not a bad Marky Mark movie. I think as time goes on, I can't take Marky Mark in movies, but that was okay. probably the borderline of when I stopped being able to take him. So, yes, I did see it. It was decent. You know, well, okay. I wasn't as deep into guns when that movie came out. So nowadays it might not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A yeah. word on Marky Mark. I like him better when he does comedy. Number one. Yeah. When, when they try to make him a super genius in Transformers, that's where they lose. Oh, me. dude. Oh, 
<laughs> don't get me started on transform. <laughs> okay, yeah. but uh, so him with Will Ferrell on what is it? Uh, Daddy's Home was pretty hilarious. Oh, that's you know? funny. Yeah, that's. And funny. then the one they did before that together, uh, the name of it is Miss is uh, escaping me right now. Uh, wow. They did. They did something before that. They did something before that. It's the one where uh, Will Ferrell stomps on the gas and screams, "America!" You know. Oh. Uh, okay. You know what? I might have seen it, but I'm not. It'll be. It's it'll not. be in the comments. Somebody's gonna bring it yeah, up. Yeah. Someone's gonna hit. And by the way, someone's telling us that in um, in the last in the last Boy Scout, um, uh, Wayans played a football player. He was a football player in that movie. Okay. I think I think I think Halle Berry was in that movie. That's like one of Halle Berry's first movies. Do you like Halle Berry? You think she's a hot chick? Sure. You do? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Just gauging. Uh, she was she was in the X-Men movies. I didn't think she was a good storm. I'll tell you that. No. Um I've uh, uh, now the truth be told, I've never right. actually liked Halle Berry. You can okay. ask you can ask Lola this. Well, you know, as a, I think she's attractive, but do I like her? She looks like a little. You know what the littles are? <laughs> you ever seen? You, you should know about the littles. You're a nerd got, like me. I I'm enjoying. I'm sure people movie. people are like, "What the hell are these dudes? These are supposed TV to be show? badass gun guys." I know, right? Forget yeah, it. The littles are these little. I think it came. It started out in England, and there was a cartoon, but they've made yeah. movies. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a movie I think with John Goodman, but these these little tiny people. They look yeah. like a mix of people and rats or something <laughs> or mice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're so that's like what that. Halle Berry reminds me of. Kind of like I'm the Who's from Whoville. Yeah, I'm not saying that she's not attractive and all that, but I kind of got like real tired of Halle Berry. I'm more of an Angela Bassett type dude. And she's the one that would have been perfect for Storm. For Storm, yeah. I mean, yeah. that was she would have been outstanding in that. Yeah, moment. she would have. Like, Angela Bassett could be Storm today. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Man, back to Shooter. So we'll okay, talk on shooter. shooter about Shooter for uh -huh. a second. Yeah. So um, the movie Shooter, I think was I, I enjoyed it, but I didn't think it was you know spectacular. Like there were some parts of it I was like, oh, that's kind of weak and whatever. But as mm -hmm. far as the action, as far as the guns and stuff, it was fun. Now. When I heard that the TV series was coming out, when I started watching it on Netflix, I was like, you know, got maybe half an hour into the first episode. And I'm like, okay, this is just going to be a rehashing of the movie. And I kind of took a break for, from it. But then I came back to that episode, finished it out, and realized that it was going to be a lot more than that. So I'm like, um, I think I'm almost done with the first So you're hooked. Season. You're I'm hooked. Yeah, I'm totally okay. hooked. Man, it's good. How oh, are the, you know what the thing, one of the things that Marky Marco, whenever you see these movies where they're playing um, special ops dudes and all that. Now, I know there's lots of different shapes for special ops dudes. Mm -hmm. And there's some of them that are real big, like buff dudes. I find that those aren't the guys that always get into the action in real life. Okay. Because those guys, I, see, I, I think a lot of times just have a lot of time on their hands and they get to shoot up steroids and lift weights and get, get all big. The real, the real badasses that I've actually met in real life are little tiny dudes that you would not even expect they could just cut you up. Right. Hundred ways to send the sundown. Right, right. So right, they, yeah, you put them in a you put them in a suit and tie, and you wouldn't tell the difference between them and anybody else. Yeah, so I kind of like that, but I know that's not real. Like it, that doesn't fit the Hollywood formula, right? No, not at all. You, they yeah. all got to look like mercenaries. Yeah, they all have to be super buffed up and all that kind of stuff. Well, so, also, mm -hmm. you also notice that they never look down their sights, right? <laughs> like, like what do we have here? This is my um, this is my new pistol build. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. Cool. Let me lock it on you here. It's an Anderson with a. Um, uh, let's see. This is my newest. Uh, my actually my only suppressor so far. It's the SRD556 with the subtac uh, little cover on it. Looks good. That's good. That um, keeps you from getting burned, right? Yeah, that's the idea. Um, mm -hmm. So and I'll go through some other stuff here in a minute if you want me to. But what they they always seem to hold it kind of like this, right? Mm -hmm. They always kind of they got to show their whole face. You know, mm -hmm. in order for it to work for movie, you know, it's like yeah, because of the angle. Yeah, they do this, and it's like now they're now they're obscuring their face, like they can yeah. actually see down their sight, <laughs> but you can't see the actor, and so they right. never ever actually look down the sight. Yeah, which, and, which from the perspective of a gun guy is like, come on. But yeah, as somebody who appreciates movies, is like I, I get it, I understand yeah. why they have to do that. No, I do, and there's a old, like I'm from Guyana. I was born in Guyana, which is in South America. Okay. And there's an old saying for that. We say that's called picture like a picture. <laughs> picture like a picture. 
Yeah, so basically, you know, back in the old olden days, they used to call movies pictures. They were moving pictures. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah, so whenever you see this crazy stuff in a movie that's not real, <laughs> my parents would just, because I would go like, Dad, you know, why is this guy doing all these flips and stuff? And you go, it's picture like a picture. <laughs> So it just means like, hey, that's just movies. That's, that's movies. That's Get over mean. it. Movies and so, movies, man. Yeah. So listen, let me. Um, the Tyvin show. The Tyvin show. He's he's mm -hmm. actually like donated ten bucks. Whoa. To get our attention, which is pretty cool. He's donated this to the chat. He's he's a big supporter of what we do here. He wants to know: Do you or I? Do either one of us carry a knife in our boot as backup? So this is a knife related question. I know we, you know, it's probably a good segue to get us away from movies. Sure. We'll be in that for a while. Yes, so we will. What is the, uh, and we'll probably go back to that, but okay. So what, what's the answer to that for you? Um, so I, I dress for an office most, most every day. So I typically wear practical shoes, but not boots. They can't, I can't look, you know, tactical when I'm going to work. I can't. Uh, yeah. So I have to have to be considerate of sort of my environment and the professional atmosphere that I have to work in, but I also try to be as practical as possible. So my shoes are very practical. I don't think I have them here. I kick my shoes off upstairs. Yeah, but uh, I wear Keens, and I um, yeah. See, so I don't, that's the same thing. Let me see if I can get my foot up there. No, no, don't no, see. I it. can't. Uh, hold get on it up second. behind your head. Uh, get it hold on a second. Head. Get it up <laughs> there. I do it this. <laughs> Let me see. Can I get my foot up here in front of the camera? Okay, there we go. Keen. Okay. Is that and a there's no? And I got the long socks. I heard you're not supposed to have your socks long like this. It's so embarrassing. But no, no. I keep hearing that too. My wife keeps telling me you got to wear the short socks. I just wear. Yeah, them. I I just found that out the other day, man. <laughs> and Lola is still buying me long socks, but I was watching something. And yeah. It's like dudes aren't supposed to wear long socks anymore. Uh, I don't you care. Know. I just wear long socks that come halfway up yeah. my calf, and it's like they're they're generally wool or something like that because it's they keep your feet cool when it's hot, yeah. and hot and warm when it's cold, and they're practical. I think of practicality. I don't yeah. really think about style that much. Yeah. But back to I'm the boot gonna, knife yeah, question. So the boot thing. Right. Um, no, I do not keep a knife like a backup in my boot or shoe or anything like that. Um, I generally I'll always have a folding knife in my pocket and. Um, I'll generally should we, should have, we show our uh, EDC knives because I don't carry yeah, I sure. don't carry a boot knife either. Okay, here's go ahead. mine. Here's mine, so people. Can hey, see that it. looks familiar. Yeah, this is this is my. Uh, uh, go ahead. Spider, it's my Spartaco. Blah, 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 blah. What's it called? <laughs> my Spartaco. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's called the paramilitary from... two, man. Here, <laughs> what is mine. it? <laughs> Here's mine, paramilitary two. Hold on a second. Let me let me lock it on you. Okay. <laughs> so this is actually the one I bought to replace that one that you're holding right now. Right, because you so gave me this. I Thank gave you, you that much. one, and then I said I need a new one, so I got this one. Yeah, I need to get this engraved with late Boy Scout or something. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I, I think you were telling me just call it the late Boy Scout because I can't remember, but you said it's the paramilitary two. Paramilitary too. Yeah. Yes. Very, very good knife, man. Thank you so much for this. You're Great. welcome. You're Enjoy. welcome. Enjoy. So that's like, I think for me, I've got that as a knife on me. I know you probably have more, and then I have like this little blade here, and that's it. Basically. Okay. All right. That's all yeah. I got on me today. What so do you got? I'll have like, um, in addition to, let's see, today's knife was this one right here. This is a steel wheel um, cut jack. And so I, I'm always switching knives, so I've always got a ton of knives in a drawer, and I just kind of pick between which one I want to carry that day or which one I'm trying to, you know, gear up to do a review on or whatever. Yeah. Uh, if if people don't know, you have like, you know, I like your knife videos, man. You know, Thanks. obviously I like your videos. I like the gun stuff. But you have some really detailed, cool knife videos, I think, for people out there. If you want to – if you're interested in where to go to for knife stuff, go to Late Boy Scout. Thanks, man. Yeah, I try. I try to do a, do a good job with that. Um, that's one that I've been carrying a lot lately. This one I've been carrying a lot too, the UTX 85 from Microtech. It's like the scaled down 85% um, Ultratech. So I've been carrying this a lot lately. I like it. It's okay. And that's like an auto deploying, uh, automatic. Yeah. Okay. It's an o OTF out the front auto. So real nice. Um, there's a lot. I mean, there's a ton of other ones that I carry. I, I yeah. can rotate between. Uh, I'll generally have that. Uh, you know, my, my main pocket knife, then I'll have like a, a Leatherman Squirt PS4, which has got a tiny little knife on it. Um, lately, I've been carrying uh, this right here. This is the Klecker um, Stowaway Tools phone case. 
Oh, wow. I've never seen that before. So I recently upgraded to the iPhone 6. And I'm always like four generations. Wait, I'm sorry. Wait. Yeah, exactly. Did you just say, exactly. you just say the iPhone six? Yeah, exactly. I'm always like four generations <laughs> behind, man. All okay, this. you're in a time so, warp. <laughs> it's true. So yeah, I mean, people are like, "Hey, do this with your phone." I'm like, uh, "I don't have that one. I can't do that." No, but uh, so this has got a bunch of little tools on the back here that you can pull out. There's like a wrench set right there. Oh, that's like, so cool, man. Scissors there. Um, what? Scissors right there. And then this has got a little folding knife in it right here. Wow, that's cool. Can you hold that a little closer to the camera so we can? Yeah, wow, sure. That's really cool, man. And so, and where does this come from? Um, Glenn Klecker made it. So, Glenn Klecker, Glenn Klecker is a, the knife designer that um, I believe he designed the Leatherman Wave, which is like their most popular uh, Leatherman. And he started his own company doing a whole bunch of different things, makes his own knives, and this is one of his most recent sort of inventions. And okay. so I got, I got a hold of this a um, year and a half, two years ago. I can't remember. Exactly. So do they have that for people from the future that have like iPhone 7s? Um, I think they do. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's sure cool. I really like that, man. That's cool. And I'm, does it, it probably comes in some different colors too, right? I'm sure it does. Yeah, this is just the one they sent me to try out. So, yeah. Very nice, and it and it offers some protection. Uh, the knife does not well protection for the phone for sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yes, uh, there and there's also like a little you can because you can see that as I pull tools out of the back of there, it's like that's metal that's going on the back of your phone. Do you just scraping your phone as you put that in? No, they actually give you a little plastic film that you put on your back of your phone first. And then you slide that in. I feel like I'm doing an infomercial for Klecker right now. I'm yeah. not. No, that's <laughs> he cool. He totally didn't pay me to put this on here. He just gave me the No, case. but that was cool. I'm glad that you showed us that because uh, that's actually something very cool, which you always got. You always have nice, cool stuff like that. I remember you had the um, – there's like a bracelet that has tools on it that you can uh, get on the plane. I don't know if you're oh, still wearing that. I thought that was cool. Yeah, I don't know if I have that here or not. Where is that? I have like a drawer full of knives, literally full of knives right now. And here. very cool tools. So while you're digging through for those, yeah. I know that uh, Art, not in here, Art, so. who joined us over here, we were in like before the show, we we sometimes do uh, live things on Facebook and Instagram. And Art was over there and he came over and he says uh, he wants to know about Hacksaw Ridge and Dunkirk. So those are like, have you okay. seen any of those movies? I saw Hacksaw Ridge. I loved it. That was good. Wow. Okay. Oh man, that was a really good movie. I mean, that was uh, the guy who didn't want to kill anyone, right? But he was in the army. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, he was. Is it? I'm trying to remember if he was the first conscientious objector or if he was just a significant one. But he he said, "I want to join, but only to help the soldiers. You know, help them um, you know, save people's lives." Right. And and so that's what he did. And the. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, that in itself is kind of an interesting premise, but I, that wouldn't be enough to sort of sell me on the whole thing because I'm like, come on, man, carry a rifle just to protect yourself. But right. it was, you can save some some guys on your side's life by carrying the rifle. But I understand where he's coming from. He right. still served and he still was out there while bullets were flying at him. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the, the fact that it's a true story and the fact that they told the story in such an interesting way and, and that they, you know, they, they told kind of like the what was probably the. The, the the climax of his life, which was, you know, um, trying to get up this ridge, Hacksaw Ridge, which they called it, uh, in which, and I'm kind of, I don't want to give stuff away here, but right. um, in, in, in trying to um, uh, get up and hold this ridge, uh, they, they kept being repelled and they'd been, they'd take it and they'd be repelled and they'd take it and they'd be repelled. And then his crew came up and they tried to take it. And most of that crew was repelled and he spent, uh, I'm not really giving anything away by telling you this because there's a, there's so many details to the movie that um, you know it's not really giving anything away. But he spent like the entire night up there while the Japanese were you know looking around for wounded and stuff. He spent the entire night also looking for wounded from his his side, pulling them off the ridge and like lowering them down off the ridge with rope and stuff to wow. save their lives. It was like okay. watching that, and he was like. You know, please, Lord, just one more. Please, Lord, just one more. And he would go back and get one more guy and, and bring him down. And it was like, by the end of that movie, I was, uh, yeah, it was, it was really good. I really Yeah, you. so you kind of, from what I'm understanding, you see that this guy was still brave and it wasn't, you oh, know, yeah. what some people might think. Like, hey, this guy's being a coward. He just had his beliefs and he stuck oh. up for them like we do, you know? Oh, my goodness. I mean, if if, if anybody called that guy a coward, I mean, that's, that's the furthest. He was the furthest thing from it. And putting himself in that position was... 
was astounding and the things that he got done. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let me see. What here. was the other movie you asked about? Uh, uh, oh, Hacks, Dunkirk. Uh, Dunkirk. Dunkirk. Yeah. Is I want to see Dunkirk. That's I have out, that just came out, right? Yeah. It's been like a week or something. So I have yeah. not seen it yet. Yeah. That's going to be pretty intense. That's, yeah. That's a uh, Christopher <laughs> Nolan who's like, yeah. I love him as a director. Yeah. I mean, Inception, Batman. <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. Interstellar. So many yeah, good Interstellar, movies. Yeah. Um, he did that movie where the guys were magicians fighting against each other. <laughs> uh, was that The Prestige? Uh, was it? I think so. That, I, think that so. Was, I believe that was The Prestige. Yeah. So he came good. out right around the same time, but I think that was The Prestige. Yeah. So, and then also, while we're on the subject of movies here, people want to know, someone wants to know, will you be seeing the Gunslinger movie with Idris Elba? I think that's Dark Tower, which... Uh, yeah. Um, it's, it's, I think it's called The Dark Tower, isn't it? I think, I think it's called The Dark Tower. I never even knew that Stephen King wrote a young adult series. I didn't even that's know. That's not that. a young adult series. It's not? Oh, okay, because I never read it. That's not that's a young not. adult series. Okay, because I saw there was a kid in there, but okay, I guess that. Uh, yeah, it, there's a kid in there, but no, I, I listened to most of the bo the books. Um, mm -hmm. I found, I think I'd found people uploaded them to YouTube, you know, uploaded the, um, you know, somebody reading through it and stuff. So I listened right. to most of the series. I don't think I got all of it, got through okay. all of it. So it's more mature than that? It is definitely more mature. I mean, okay. Stephen King stuff is generally pretty mature. But uh, so I listened to most of it. The The story was was interesting. Uh, the world that he kind of created was probably more interesting than the story itself to me. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'm hearing is that um, the movie neither does, you know, it neither stands on its own as, you know, satisfying people who haven't read the books. And like, it doesn't really satisfy them, but then the people who have read the books, it serves them even less. So oh, okay. what I'm hearing is that it's just, it's just kind of going to be a flop. Okay. Uh, so and I I may see it. I'll probably pick it up on Redbox or something because... Yeah. I mean, I know obviously there's some unbelievable shooting in there or unrealistic, you know, picture uh, like I a picture. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't mind that so much because that's, yeah. you know, you're, you're creating a fantasy world, right? So things are yeah. going to happen in a fantastical way. And so I don't mind that. Yeah. Uh, and that can and just then, be fun to watch. And then I think there's probably a little bit, a little bit of controversy because they switched the uh, race of the main character. If they or something. did, I don't know yeah. if that was, uh, yeah. was that really prevalent in the stories. It wasn't. It, it, okay. it, was, it was not a critical thing. Like what his race was made no difference in the movie. Yeah. And so when they cast Idris Elba, I was just like. I like Idris Elba. I mean, yeah, you know? he's you know he's a believable badass. Oh heck yeah, so, heck yeah. And I mean, again, you know. I mean, if you're talking about this is supposed to represent the American West, then yeah, yeah, then his race could be an issue because it's like you didn't see a lot of black dudes um, cruising around the American West doing that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm sure there were some black cowboys. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, you know, for, they probably they probably they probably had to keep low profiles. <laughs> right. So my point is like. <laughs> If they were trying to pattern it, it like completely after the American West, then yeah, that could be an issue. Yeah. But I don't think they were. And yeah, and it's fantasy. It's you know, it's, it's a mixture of like American Western uh, yeah. story and, and fantasy. But apparently, the movie just didn't give you anywhere near enough of the Western aspect to it. So yeah. maybe it just needed a lot more of that. I think sometimes we get into this stuff when they switch things around. Um, you know, because people are like, oh, you know, that's messing up the whole thing. And I kind of. You know, I, I don't care about that as much, um, I think, as how good is the story, Yeah. you know, when you tell the story, because there's, you yeah. know, it, it's it, to me, it's it's a lot of this has to do with storytelling. Now, for example, with Ghostbusters, when they switch to all chicks. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't see it, honestly. I yeah, I didn't want to see it because I was like, OK, you know, the fa the fanboys are all dudes. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and and the original Ghostbusters had like, you know, hot chick in there. What's her name? Um, uh, Sigourney Weaver. Yeah, Sigourney we Weaver. But it was comedy. You know, we wanted to see ourselves reflected as dudes in, in, in the in the Ghostbusters guys. And, yeah. you know, like they fit different prototypes for dudes. So like when you switch it to all women and the people who would go see that are guys were like, oh, I guess this is not for me. <laughs> You know, so sometimes that is a thing. Yeah, and, I agree. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, they really didn't have, like, hot chicks that I would want to see anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I refused to see it, but I actually saw – we were on vacation, and the hotel had it. Okay. 
where it was free and I looked at it and it was worse than I thought. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't go see it. Then. Yeah, I try. I was like, let me give it a chance. Yeah, it made me laugh. <laughs> I know. I think my kids actually watched it with my aunt, um, but that was like they rented it from the the red yeah. box or something. So it's like, right. yeah. yeah, yeah, it was horrible. It was horrible, and that's like, you know, why why do all of that? But I, you know, hey, Hollywood, right? You know, yeah, this yeah. is how this stuff is going nowadays. So that's true. Um, I totally understand that. Okay, so uh, yeah, now someone, someone is uh, who is this? Let me see, who is that? Nine oh four outdoors mm -hmm. is saying, you know, did I just call Sigourney Weaver a hot chick? Yes, yeah, Sigourney <laughs> Weaver in the seventies and eighties was a hot chick. What the yeah. hell wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, she was. <laughs> He's obviously too young <laughs> to know any better. If you didn't see Alien? Go see Alien, the original. Alien. Yeah, and yeah, then you you'll see what I'm talking about. about. She's like one of those scary, crazy hot chicks. Yeah. Yeah, no, she's like super, she's like a super intense, she's got a lot of like toughness to her presence, but yeah. at the same time, yeah, she's hot. Yeah, she was, she was sexy, and, and you know, I mean. Uh, and even, you know what, even through Galaxy Quest, did you ever see Galaxy Quest? Yes, she was, she was good she in was there too. Good yeah, in Galaxy absolutely. Quest. Absolutely, yeah, but 904 Outdoors is too young to know about that. I'm just That's teasing. That's bad. Yeah, he's like a teenager, <laughs> so he wouldn't know about Galaxy Quest either. <laughs> and he's probably not that nerdy. So let's just put get, it there. Gotta be a little more nerdy. Yeah, Galaxy Quest, one of my favorite movies, and actually, uh, William Shatner is in the news, right? Because um, obviously, William Shatner is in Galaxy Quest. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. William Shatner is not in Galaxy Quest. It's Tim Allen. Tim Allen. Tim Allen, but Tim Allen is playing William, like he's playing a he's William playing Shatner. The, yeah, the Star William Trek. Shatner character type. That's what he's playing. Yeah, with. yeah. So, like, that's what Galaxy Quest is about. It's kind of a takeoff on Star Trek. Yeah. And so, so Tim Allen is playing um, the William Shatner type character. Right. And then I guess Sigourney Weaver is playing. Um, she would be considered like a cross between uh, Uhuru and. Uhuru. Uh, yeoman something or other. Yeah, like, or, or hot chicks that you see in sci-fi movies. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, but it's funny because uh, William, Sh the, the reason why I thought of William Shatner, even though it wasn't him, is like William Shatner, I was, uh, I, I think he's in the news because everyone else in Star Trek are all social justice warriors now. Okay. Yeah, and William Shatner is not having that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so he's him. like, yeah, he's telling them to shut the hell up. Good for him, So dude. he's getting a lot of flack. I haven't seen that. Yeah. I should look up what he's what he said. What? what yeah, yeah. Well, I'll I'll try to pull that up here when we hit some other stuff. Uh, well, I think that's true about Tim Allen as well because he had the the whatever the TV show that he was doing recently. Yeah, where it was very much, um, you know, very kind of had a conservative bent to it. Yeah. So um, yeah. So so let's see here. Let me uh, did it, let me hit this up. Okay. Someone wants you to tell us about the video, the intro video with Shia. I don't know if I'm saying that. Is it Shia? Yeah, Shia LaBeouf. Shia. Yeah. So what's up with that? I um, so the, I guess they call it an intro video just because it's like it's the one that you first find on my channel if you're not subscribed to my channel. Oh, okay. Did you so, just put that up? Because I don't think I've seen what they're talking about. Well, you probably – you may not have seen it because you've been subscribed to me for a while. Yeah, right. And so, um, again, it, it is on the um, – like it's on my channel page when you first show up there if you mm -hmm. haven't – because it's got different settings, right? And you can mm -hmm. say this one's visible to people that are brand new. This one's visible to subscribers. And this one's visible right. to you. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the one that's visible to new people. And I put that up there because I like it. Yeah, I thought it was hilarious. And so I did that video a um, couple of years ago, at least. And um, it was back when you probably remember the um, the video that went up with Shia LaBeouf. It was all green screen, and it was him doing the whole "Do it, just." Do it. Okay, I know that he's always in some craziness. Okay, <laughs> and there's always some videos coming out with him. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. so he posted that thing, and it was like the background of it. I don't know too much about, but it was like um, just a piece of like a much longer video that was sort of like I don't know some sort of an acting clinic or something that he did with some people. And then, and so he did a bunch of little uh, monologue type things on a green screen, and it was just mm -hmm. him kind of walking back and forth doing these little things. And each one was like okay. maybe one or two minutes. And okay. then he did the the motivational one, whatever that was, where he was screaming, "Do it, just do it," you know, and "Yes, you can," and all this other stuff. <laughs> and people thought it was so hilarious because it was so random and weird, and it's him on a green screen. And everybody, I mean, absolutely everybody, the week that it came out, 
everybody that knew how to use a mouse was up there and you know getting that into their editing software and putting him on the backgrounds and it mm -hmm. turned into more than a meme like everybody chopped it up and did all kinds of fun stuff with it so that week as soon as i saw what it was i'm like man this is hilarious there's got to be some way to get this into a gun video how do i turn this into something that would be fun to watch for my audience and mm -hmm. so <clears throat> so basically i just kind of wrote a script around what he had already said and what he was doing and wrote kind of a script about what you know how i might interact with him in that video and and kind of built that script based on that and uh, it turned into a thing where I was trying to zero a rifle and he was waiting impatiently for me to get off my rifle so he could have a turn shooting it. And so it was him, he and I going back and forth and him shouting at me, do it, just take the shot, you know, basically. And okay. so, and yeah, the, the way, I, the, the context that I put it in made it look like he was just desperate to hurry up and get on my AR-15 and do some shooting. When in reality, he there was nobody over there. It was just a field, you know. But I put him on green screen, uh, pacing back and forth, watching me shoot. So, so is uh, is Shia? He's probably not a gun guy. He's one of those I, social justice dudes, I think. Yeah. Did you see the whole yeah. um, with the cop that arrested him? Well, no. Like oh. before that, I think he did this. Um, he did this live streaming thing for Facebook. He said it was going to go up for the entire Trump administration. And it was in really it was in it was in downtown New York City somewhere or Brooklyn maybe and he um, it, he, he had a sign up there as a camera and he's like it's just live streaming constantly and you're supposed to walk up to the camera and you're supposed to say he will not divide us and that's all you're supposed to say you know oh that was probably like an art piece for him yeah kind of like an art piece slash you know demonstration political statement thing and mm -hmm. uh, it, it quickly became co-opted. Other people would show up and you know use the camera for other things. Uh, Steven Crowder, who's, who I watch here on YouTube, uh, does Louder with Crowder, is a great, uh, great show. Um, mm -hmm. he, he went there and did like, uh, he did his show live from that, <laughs> from that camera. And so he had, <laughs> had like a fake microphone that really? he, yes. he was holding up and the, you know, mm -hmm. his uh, producer Jared was like, had a fake, you know, producing, production yeah. board in front of him and they were right. standing there and they were doing the whole show but you know they they were open to having people just come up and debate with them and chat with them the whole time which was really cool to see um yeah. but yeah shia i would say that he's definitely on the left side of the political spectrum and so, yeah he's also lost his shit he's totally batshit crazy now <laughs> i mean he, he was a good act you know he's been acting for a long time since he was a kid he's been in right. he's done some decent movies well, like the original it, dude. there's like a lot of kid actors just go nuts did you notice that? Yeah, um, probably has something to do with Hollywood. I agree. You know, um, I agree. I think there's some stuff going on in Hollywood that is not good for kids. Yeah, you know, not everyone goes down that that path, but he's totally, fully embraced the crazy. Yeah, you know, it's there's so much life. we could talk about Shia LaBeouf craziness <laughs> for a long time because um, I remember reading that he got raped <laughs> by a woman. <laughs> huh? oh, I hadn't read that. But yeah, he was doing some kind of art piece <laughs> and I okay. guess he wasn't talking and okay. uh, people were coming into this. I think he had a space and people were coming in there and he was doing this thing where you could come in, but he wasn't talking. So this okay. woman just came in there and sexually abused him. Okay. <laughs> it was just, I was just read about it if you have time to burn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because it's just funny as hell and he's just totally lost his, you know, I'm not trying to say the dudes can't be raped by women. I'm not right, trying right. to bring down the dudes out there that have been sexually abused by women because it does happen as yeah, crazy sure as that does. sounds. Sure it does. You know, um, yeah. but I'll have to look that yeah, up. It's it's a debatable thing. I don't know if you want to. I don't know if you want to go deep on that. No, no, nah, we'll, we'll leave it. <laughs> yeah, probably some not. Folks, so. Some folks have asked who Steven Crowder is. Yeah. So, um, Louder with Crowder is the um, the YouTube channel, or at least that's the name of the show. It right. might be louderwithcrowder.com and Steven Crowder if you wanted to uh, find him on YouTube. But um, he's got, I don't know, he's like, what is it, 700,000, 800,000 subscribers. He does yeah, he's really relatively well. big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he does spoofs. I mean, he's a, oh, I guess yeah. you can put him as a conservative comedian. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and he does spoofs and stuff like that because I think uh, I was watching a video that he did for the Mug Club. Yeah. Yeah, basically a spoof of uh, the last Batman movie. I haven't checked that one out yet. 
Yeah. But I saw one he did of Braveheart that was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, he's always doing stuff. Yeah. So if you haven't, you know, check him out. There's, there's lots of good guys out there. Um, Who do you watch that's not a gun channel? Um, I watch I, I watch uh, Crowder sometimes. I watch Stefan Molyneux. I watch Stefan as well. Yeah, um, I sometimes even watch Joe Rogan. Who Joe Rogan is like, uh, he he's he's an LA guy, so he's a comedian. Yeah, he's but I, I I wouldn't put him in the category of being a conservative, but he is pro hunting, pro gun, pro man, and stuff like that. But right. honestly, he's a dude out in LA that smokes a lot of weed. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> he can't completely yeah. understand us, but he's not against us either. Yeah, true. I watch him sometimes. Uh, yeah. Particularly when he has guests on that I'm really interested in. Right. Yeah. And then I watch a lot of car stuff because I'm, I, I don't know, are you into cars? Not particularly. Oh, okay. No. I, I, I don't know why. I'm I, sad. I, I'm putting on my sad face now I, for I, everyone I, listening I probably to this. should be, but uh, yeah. I don't know. It's just one new thing to get into that I haven't gotten into, I guess. I mean, yeah. I drive a car, but aside from yeah. that, I'm, I'm what, what kind of, do you, what kind of car do you drive? drive? a Subaru. I'm a lesbian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you said it. I'm glad you know you're a lesbian. You're, e you're either a lesbian or IT guy. Right. Well, I'm not or an both. IT guy, but I guess I'm close. I work in graphic design, so it's yeah. close. Um, what Subaru do you have? Uh, Outback. It's like okay. a 2012, 2012 Outback. But uh, I have a friend who's, who uh, does some local comedy clubs and stuff, and he opens with, uh, hey, my name's Andrew. I'm a lesbian. Oh, sorry. No, I, I drive a Subaru. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, statistically, that's who buys Subarus, and uh, it's very stereotyp. Yeah, it's a stereotypical thing. Like people, yeah. you know, kind of stereotype that. But, but yeah, yeah, there um, are dudes that buy Subarus. Like my brother had a. Well, actually, a bunch of people in my family have Subarus. Yep. Yeah. No. Cool. Um, so my wife's dad was a Subaru mechanic for her whole life. Mm -hmm. So all they ever drove were Subarus, and so uh, you know, I kind of married into it. I guess you could say. Okay. And, uh, we've kind of just been driving Subarus ever since. But honestly, they're super practical cars. They get good gas mileage, and they go everywhere I want to take them. So yeah, that's, they're pretty that's, tough. They're pretty they tough. They're all-wheel drive. I, I like Subarus. I've never – have I owned a Subaru? I've actually never owned a Subaru. Um, I think it's because the styling is definitely for lesbians. <laughs> so <laughs> but if they I'm not against Subarus and people in my family have them and there's some but you know there's some badass Subarus like a WRX I mean yeah oh heck yeah that's iconic <laughs> yeah that's true yeah I, I guess I need to get a Subaru I am a car guy in case you're wondering mm -hmm. no <laughs> so, I remember what was the car you had when I was out there last you still uh, have that? yes I do I have a Dodge Challenger scat pack yeah, yeah. you know yeah. um it's pretty bad yeah, it's pretty badass. I, I love it. Uh, I didn't think I was a Mopar guy, but I just got another Mopar. Okay. So I got a Ram Rebel. Nice. With a Hemi engine. Basically, it's a Ram 1500 that's uh, all like geared up and tricked out. Uh-huh. You know, it's pretty badass. It has like a air suspension system. So it's like it levels itself and all that. Oh, when nice. you go, yeah, it's four, it's four by four. Nice. Huh? Like like Chrysler's or something or no not Chrysler. Um yeah, there's there's a, there's a few cars. But I don't know how many. Um, I don't know how many four by fours have a air suspension system. But basically, it you can make it drop all the way down to the ground if you're putting heavy things in there. Okay. You know, it's a pickup truck. Or if you're getting in, if you're sh if you're height challenge, I was gonna say short, like low. Uh -huh. <laughs> but if you're height challenge, you can drop it down to the ground. When you go off road, you can lift it up. And when you're on the highway, it automatically settles into an aerodynamic stance and all that kind of stuff. Nice. Uh, plus, if you put a bunch of weight in the in the bed, it will level itself out. It will level out the ride and all that. So that's pretty deluxe, man. Yeah, it's it's you know it's kind of nice. So I I posted something where I said that I'm country now because I have a pickup truck. I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> which I, I, there were there are some people who are actually country that took exception to that. Not it's a few. <laughs> No, not that many. But you know what? I've never – I have owned a pickup truck, but I never really drove it on the road. I didn't put plates on it or anything, and it, it didn't work that great. Okay. I so, mean, you know, I still mm -hmm. may – I kind of reserve the right to buy a pickup truck one of these days, and I mm -hmm. may. And I'd totally be down for buying like a, you know, old, beat-up Chevy or oh, Ford. That's what I was going to ask you where you would go if you got a pickup. I don't care about the brand particularly right mm -hmm. now, but I would go for something old and, you know, like strong running, but – in in like 
you maybe some questionable cosmetic shape right. and then just you know run that thing into the ground and it just like how it. old like uh apocalyptic old where it just uh, has carburetors so it can survive <laughs> a... <laughs> no probably yeah. like 80s or something i'd go with something like boxy and old from the 80s mm -hmm. i wouldn't mind that yeah but that's that's if and when i decided to get into a pickup as it is right now the Subaru does fine for me. I have a trailer that I use to pull things around. I got a motorcycle fairly recently. Okay, cool. Uh, so Open that's a bike. That, it's a Honda XL250 1980s. Okay. So um, old bike. It's beat up. It's um, it's got a terrible paint job on it. It's like all black everywhere, and um, a lot you know a few pieces missing here and there. But it runs nice. Are so, you gonna fix it up? Um, a little. Like it needs a new rear tire, but that's. I may not go much further than that. So what I'll probably do is obviously get the new rear tire for it, um, get it as clean as I want it to be probably, and then um, I don't think I'm like going to dress it up or anything really. I'll, I'll probably just make sure that it runs real nice and strong. It's got everything it needs mechanically. Uh, and then as it is right now, it does run pretty well. But uh, at, at that point, I don't know, dude. I might just Mad Max it up a little bit, you know? Yeah. So just why did you why did you get the bike? Is it um, you just enjoy riding, or did you get it just like as an apocalyptic kind of thing? Like I'm gonna have a bike, I can you know get out of the city if I right. need. Right, um, a little bit of that, honestly, but also because I'd never owned a motorcycle before. Like a long mm -hmm. time ago, I owned a scooter, which is not the same as a motorcycle. You know, I didn't have shit gears to shift or anything like that. Right. So knowing that, you know, I didn't really have any experience with that, I thought this is something I want to get experience with. And also I want something that's got the capability to take me on tracks that maybe my, uh, my car doesn't want to go on or won't go on very easily. Yeah. And with that in mind, I was like, you know, there are a lot of backcountry roads and mountain roads that I'd love to spend some time exploring, uh, in which it doesn't need to be street legal necessarily. And so I could just hop on, hop on that thing, ride and uh just kind of enjoy some cool views yeah and get, and get some cool youtube footage and that's kind of the the other main thing you know is this is going to be a, a tool for um doing stuff for the channel so that's kind of the oh cool have you have you posted about. anything from it yet or no i i still okay. i i got it and then i wrote it a little bit for like a week or two and then i mostly kind of put it in the shed and held it there because it's like okay i need to get the tire i need to change the oil when am i going to do that and i've just been yeah, <laughs> crazy busy since then. So really, I don't know how you could be busy. I mean, you know, you're just a YouTube guy that makes videos all the time. I know, it's weird, right? <laughs> that should you be so that easy. That's you all just you make do, videos right, and make Shane? money. You just you just sit around, talk to the yeah. camera, and make money all day, don't yeah, you? Yeah, why don't you use your millions to like hire someone? You could get Jesse James to fix up your motorcycle, man. What's wrong? Yeah, I haven't thought that? of that. I why didn't I think of that? <laughs> yeah, you know, what else do you do with your YouTube million, Shane? I. <laughs> Just lots of bullets, I guess. <laughs> now, just because some people out there are not, they're not going to believe that we're being facetious. Oh yeah, yeah, but we oh, are. Man. Some <laughs> folks, some folks still think that whether it's gun guys or anybody else on YouTube, that and maybe I don't know, maybe all the other YouTube channels out there. If you talk about the toy channels and the vlog channels, and uh, you know all the other types of channels that that the comedy channels and whatnot that don't do anything related to what we do, maybe they do still earn tons of bucks. I don't know. Yeah, I think there's I probably there's probably something. I mean, there's millions of people that have YouTube channels. Oh, yeah. So there's probably... A, and, and more every day. Right. And there's probably maybe anywhere from a few hundred to maybe a thousand people that have YouTube channels that maybe make uh, in the six figures, right? Because, I, I, you know, I, I haven't looked into this scientifically. This is all just... You know, yeah, I mean, empirical I don't know. evidence here, and but there's yeah. maybe ten guys that make a million dollars, like everyone thinks. I mean, most of the rest of the people doing YouTube before the whole, you know, because because what you you were referring to just now is that everything changed with YouTube, and there was kind of a YouTube apocalypse, right? The ad apocalypse people talk about, yeah, yeah, and so so <clears throat> there may be, and I don't know, I don't have any idea who or how much money they earn, but yeah, there probably are still plenty of YouTube millionaire millionaires out there. But I think that what YouTube has chosen to place the um, the ads on and, and sort of the high um, the high bid ads, the ones that earn the most money, what they've chosen to put those on are not videos like ours. No. So, no, we're kind of in the band category. We're soft. We're, we're like soft band. Yeah, so, sort of. We're, we're, yeah. Uh, we're restricted. We're age restricted. That's for sure. Yeah. So, 
and, and age restricted. Some folks say, and I got a friend who who's done some stuff voluntarily with YouTube, and he's given me some some insight in that regard. And he's like, uh, yeah, you know, in, in regards to the um, the age restricted stuff, he says that that's like a really tiny percentage of the views that actually that YouTube actually has, mm -hmm. and that um, and he also said, look, the you know, there's not there isn't different treatment happening with gun channels. With with YouTube, they're not picking. Yeah, up. I think it's yeah, it's all around. There's lots of different channels that are going through that. If you've got cursing or anything yeah. that they consider questionable or political, yeah, it's not yeah. just gun things. It's just whatever they don't like. I mean, you yeah, know. I think yeah, maybe they have you know sort of categories for what they what they claim is like you said, kind of questionable and and not necessarily friendly to the broadest audience. And for that stuff, they just don't give you the high bid ads and so they'll give you these low bid ads that won't earn you as much money or i don't know but, yeah. but then, i mean we're also it's seasonal number one and so right now it's like about the lowest it gets for ad revenue in, in the first yeah. place but yes. then that in mind with all the changes that have happened with youtube and the way that they're um sort of you know whether whatever it is they're doing uh i'm also seeing things like dropping like from like a half to one third of what it had been last year, so it's there's clearly whether it's whether it's a targeting of, of gun channels and and folks that are a little more uh, questionable in that sense, or if it's just a general drop in ad revenue across the board. I'm not sure, but right. uh, it has <laughs> definitely changed. And so yeah, all those millions you're talking about, I haven't seen them. Yeah, I think there's a perfect storm of stuff going on nowadays. Also, not only is it just a general drop because it's the summertime and people are going on vacation and buying other things. Yeah. And that affects also the firearms market. Now, for the most part, firearms manufacturers and accessory makers are not allowed to advertise on YouTube. So people think that we benefit because maybe the industry spends a lot of money advertising. If they do, they're still spending that money with uh, magazines, I would say, probably. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting cash from anybody. Yeah, so I mean, that's the thing, you know, unless like I've got a few sponsors. I mean, that's really the only way. Honestly, the way to do this, there's not there's not a lot of money in this thing at all. And right now, in this particular time, everything is down, in, including even people watching stuff. Right. True. Because because gun guys aren't as super interested in guns right now because their families are on vacation. The kids are out of school. You know they're, they're they're spending money on other things right now, right? You know, and that that um, that interest in guns really picks up towards the end of the year, heading towards shot show. Yeah, 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 for sure. You know, um, yeah. if you want to if you want to look at this like on a chart or something like that. So, all of those things being said, if you want to be consistently, in my opinion, if you want to consistently put these videos up, you either have to have your own money or have people that sponsor you or have like a Patreon thing going or, or have a combination of different things going on. Like, you know, that's what we do. Right. You know? in, in my case, the reason, you know, the reason it's not uh, the end of the world for me is that, you know, I still keep a full-time job and I've still, I've done that the entire time throughout my channel. So the, the amount of videos I'm able to put out totally reflects that, you know, because mm -hmm. it's like I, some weeks it's one video a week. It's a Sunday video, and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's all I had time for. And, right. and you consistently put up videos on, on a regular basis on Sundays, right? Yeah, that is true. Okay. And if you go to my channel page, it even says that. So I try to make every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Utah time is when my video goes up. But I also try to have a Thursday video as well. Um, sometimes that, you know, some weeks that doesn't happen, so I don't, I don't promise it. But the Sunday video, I just more or less 99% guaranteed to be there every week. Mm -hmm. um, I got off track. What were we talking about? You were saying like the frequency of videos you um, use. Oh, you, yeah, yeah. You usually so, put them up on Sundays, but sometimes the frequency goes up, right? Uh, sometimes the frequency goes up when I have time to. Um, but, you know, that's I, – I talked about that because it's, you know, just kind of a reflection of the fact that, you know, as a, as a guy that works at a, at a normal job full time, nine to five, it's like – and then I've got stuff to do with my family and then I've got stuff to do around the house and then it's like – Oh yeah, I've got a video I want to work on. That's why it's like one video a week for me. So again, it's not the end of the world that uh, things have gone downhill as far as ad revenue, uh, because again, I still have the full-time job to rely on. Um, but 
it, it, it does make it harder to sort of keep things going at a pace or at a quality level that is, is meaningful and is, is where I want it to be when, yeah. when revenue is down a lot. I, mean, I will say yeah. that some of the things that have um, kind of made up for the YouTube, uh, the drop in ad revenue is affiliate revenue. So I have, I have things set up with uh, Amazon and a lot of other channels do as well, and that's, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a great way to do it. Uh, Amazon, a um, uh, handful of other places that I use that um, that I've able, been able to set up affiliate stuff through, which means that when I talk about something in the video, and if you like what you're seeing and you're you're satisfied and you're sold on it, it's like there's a link down below. You can always just go over there and buy it. And if you do, then a little bit of money comes back to me, which helps to make up for that ad revenue that has dropped so significantly. Right, which is a good way to show you know to show some appreciation and support. For yeah, someone can, who's yeah. giving something valuable to people when you take your time and give them your opinion. And yeah. I mean, you know, I, I've I watch your videos, man. You tell people what you think about stuff. You know, I was looking at a video you put up recently talking about and we were talking about this last night actually, because we had a AK conversation. You were talking about um a Century Arms AK that you bought. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I, I think you bought that a couple months ago. I bought it um it was probably the beginning back. of the year. It was like back in February, March, yeah. sometime around there. The M70 mm -hmm. ABM, yeah. And I gave Century the ch the chance to, uh, you know, I, I wanted to just post a video right out of the gate with it, saying, "Hey, here's the issue with it." But uh, I wanted to say, "No, let's get this back in their hands first. So it took me a lot longer to get the video out than I had planned, um, but I wanted to have a complete point of view with it, and so sent it back to them. Said, "Hey, you know, here's your here's your chance. Please." get this little thing tweaked because I saw that the front sight was one way and then like right. the grenade sight was the other way. Yeah. And I'm like, this doesn't work, man. I gotta it was funny. I was I was watching that and I was like, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I know. And I and, I, then, I, and they you so so you sent it to them. I sent it to them and uh -huh. pointed out what it was and I even like shot some video showing what it was, put some levels on the site saying, look, here's what I'm seeing. You know, this one this bubble's way off there. That, that bubble's way off here. So, you know, please address this and get it back to me looking a little bit better. And uh, if they made a change to it, it didn't look any better. And in, in fact, the hood on the site may have been bent a little bit. And so I, I pointed it out and I showed it in the video. And, you know, Century, you had your chance to fix it. I, I wish you had. Yeah. But um, it, it just, it, I don't, and not, I'm not hating on Century Arms. I, I think right. that, you know, for the most part, they put out some pretty good guns. But, and uh, we want to we want to like guns. We're gun guys. We want to like yeah. guns. We want to like companies. Yeah. I mean, you know, we oh want my to. Gosh, man. I see yeah. you know you see pictures, you get emails, and you're like, oh, that one looks good. Oh, that one looks good. Oh, I right. don't have that one yet. I don't have one like that yet. And so you're thinking about all this stuff. And most of you're into AKs, if you're even interested in AKs, most of them come from Century Arms. So mm -hmm. many variants do anyway. And so and the affordable ones, by the way. And so you're like, Yeah, oh, they're yeah, probably the biggest AK, like single AK importer, right? I would guess so, especially yeah. of different of so many different types, right? And so you see all these different ones, and you want to get into them, and you're super tempted by them. And yeah, like you said, we're into. We want to like them. We want to get into that. We want to shoot it. We want to have a great time with it. We want to say this thing performs flawlessly, and it looks like it's put together by a master. We want to say all that stuff, but we have to say what we find. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it's just as disappointing to us as it is to some people. And I think that um, you know, if when I get into things like that, I'm not trying to bring down a company. I'm trying to help them and help people because I don't think people appreciate enough what it is for guys out there to buy guns. You know, people just don't have all the money in the world, right? Some people do, but most people don't. And you're buying a rifle. Sometimes you have to sell another rifle or figure out how to get this money or not eat. <laughs> Yeah, or your exactly. kids have to wear the same shoes or what you know whatever it is that you personally have to do and and what happens when you buy that gun i mean it 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 could devalue if you buy it and then immediately you have to sell it and then there's problems with it yeah yeah exactly somebody mike bryant was just saying he he watched my c308 video um said it was a good video thanks mike uh that yeah. one that's that's a, that was you did that a while ago, right? That was I did the, do that a while ago, and so that was one that I bought from them. Um, yeah, like right off the bat, like they sent it to me as a T and E, uh, gave me their price on it, and I'm like, yeah, I want this gun. I just think it's cool, so I, I bought it. Spent a lot of time with it, trying to trying to make it the gun that I felt like I wanted it to be. Um, spent a good amount of time, a good amount of ammo, uh, shooting that gun, and then you know I felt like I got a ton of data on it. 
understanding what it could do and what it couldn't do. Ultimately, it was like, this gun is not impressing me for accuracy at all. With the, the best ammo I had in hand, it was like still 3 MOA. So I, I was like, I just feel like it should be doing better than that. And um, the, there were a handful of different performance issues that it had that were pretty disconcerting. And I tried to cover all that as best I could in the video. And also, you know, in that video, I spent a lot of time sort of preparing that video and, and uh, scripting it, actually, because that's, that's one of the few that I did script. I, I script some videos now and then, but okay. typically I, I'll do things off the cuff. But I scripted that one because there was a lot I wanted to say about it. It was, was going to be real difficult to hold it all in my head. And, um, you know, I just wanted to kind of get the information right. So I spent a lot of time sort of researching the type and understanding um, the whole G3 set me platform. Uh, and and t in, in order to talk about the the C308 as sort of the latest iteration and uh, version of all that, so it was it was a fun video to make. It took a lot of time, but thanks for the compliment. I, I I'm pretty proud of it. I think that it stands the test of time as far as you know the information that's in it. And um, yeah, I, I wish the C308 was a better gun, man. <laughs> yeah, it's it's um yeah, it. I'm afraid it's not. But it, then again, it's like I don't. I've never shot a PTR. I've never shot an original G3 either. And uh, some folks aren't wildly crazy about those either as compared to like your AR-10s and stuff. So Yeah. Um, well, that was a conversation even we, one of the other conversations we got into last night because we had the question came up of, you know, what's better, an AR, AR or an AK? <laughs> and uh, the gentlemen that were on with me, they, I, in my opinion, are AK fan fan boys. Okay. You know, I respect them for that. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we're we're all fanboys. I'm like a bullpup fanboy and all that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think the AK is better than the AR. You know, in yeah. general. So. Uh, you know what? If I, I don't know if we want to get into that whole thing or not. But <laughs> well, what do you think? You can tell me. <laughs> I guess I'll I guess I'll throw in on that just a little bit. Um, I love the AK platform for all the variety you can get from it and all the personality and all the history that comes with it. So right. for, that, for that reason, looking at AKs, I love looking at them. I love holding them. I love shooting them. Yeah, they're the mo I think they're the, the probably one of the most, if not the most popular rifle in the world. Yeah, they're iconic. They're, um, they're, there's, just, there's a lot of history to them, a lot of interesting stuff going on with the AK. And they're that, fun. Yeah, for that reason, like romantically, I like the AK. But as far as, a, like, from a practical standpoint, I will always rather have an AR. It's, it's um, from an accuracy standpoint, I like it better. From the, uh, the standpoint of being able to um, swap out parts and the interchangeability of parts with, you know, your neighbor or whoever, or just getting new parts and customizing it to be exactly the gun you want, expecting things to fit well, um, mm -hmm. the AR wins there, too. Uh, the round, I mean, you could say that you don't like the round, you don't like... Five five six as much as like seven six two by thirty nine. Okay, you know that's I I, I don't I don't you know, that's a different discussion probably. Yeah, it's and it's a nice big beefy bullet relative. Yeah, you know. yeah, it is. Um, so, but uh, yeah, in generally speaking, like for for hunting or just general defensive applications or just as a sporting rifle, as if you're going to buy one rifle and you don't know what you should get, I should say I would tell you get an AR. Get, yeah. Get because right now they're. Uh, as far as prices are concerned, you can get into either a decent AK or a decent AR for around the same price lately. Yeah. Uh, and well, and the thing is, if you want, I mean, look, I'm not trying to say there's not great AKs because there are. Mm -hmm. You know, there's great, there's very, there's AKs out there that can be relatively accurate, all that kind of stuff. But you're going to spend some money even today. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, that's the thing. Uh, you're, you're talking like high-end AKs here. Yeah, yeah. That is absolutely true. And, and it comes down to if you want to, for me anyway, the way I'm seeing it lately, it seems like if I want to have an AK that I really love and that I think is like top, top quality and w heads and tails, you know, way above, um, you know, the $600 AK that I might, you know, I'm tempted to buy. If I want to yeah. get into one of those, I am. I'm spending yeah, a two, lot of two, three thousand. You yeah, know, maybe approaching that, four thousand at that price. Maybe I just want to get into an AR-10. 
you know? Yeah. I mean, and you don't have, and nowadays now there are AR 10s that you would have had to in the past spend. Hey, let me lock it on you so we can see that. Okay. Ahead, show that to us again. Yeah. There's AR 10s that you could, you could have in the past spent three, three, 4,000, but there's not that many nowadays. You can get a good AR 10 for less than 2000, right? Oh yeah. I don't remember what this one costs. So this is a stag, right? This is a stag ten. This is like their their lightweight stag. This is like okay. the sixteen inch barreled one. Um, so far, I'm liking it. They sent me this one as a T um, and E, yeah. and uh, I've only got a few rounds through it so far. But so far, I like like the size of it. Yeah. So this it. is a yeah the stag ten. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We've got we've got one of the stag tens that we're testing. We also have one that we're giving away the bones version, which. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. I like a I like the idea of companies doing a bones version. I like that rifles. too. Totally. Well, especially with ARs, right? Yeah. Because you get into you get into um, all the customization, all the different components that you're thinking about putting onto it, and maybe you you know maybe you do, maybe you don't know what you want to put on your AR. Maybe you'll figure it out down the road. But if you do know what you want on your AR, it's usually not going to be the exact same thing that they got, they're going to put it on it uh, when they first sell it to you. Yeah. So you're going to be looking at it and be like, uh, I really want this handguard or I really want that grip on it. I really want that particular stock. And everybody's taste is going to be a little bit different. So you're getting a bones version of something like that is, is uh, super useful. Yeah, so, I yeah. think going forward, we'll see probably more companies doing the bones versions. You could save five, six hundred bucks, maybe more than that. And then you could put what you want to on the rifle. Okay, what's okay, this lock, one? You're lock it on this. This is oh, the, uh, the lightweight. Brick. Yeah, this is the Brigand Arms carbon fiber handguard. <laughs> cool. I got this in for T&E as well. I don't think I'm going to be dropping bricks on it necessarily, but we'll try <laughs> to, do to see it, how strong it is. Yeah, it's carbon fiber. It's probably relatively tough. I mean, oh, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's probably they, worth $1,000 or something, right? Not not quite. Not oh, quite. Okay. I think it's in the threes, though. I think oh, it's threes? To, okay. It's close to 300 bucks. And then but, what kind of barrel is that? It doesn't look like a pencil barrel. Is it? Um, no, it doesn't look like one. No, I don't know what that is exactly. So this yeah. gun is not necessarily set up to be like a primo lightweight rifle. This is just the a, a, the uh, Anderson AM15, the one that's um, the RF85 treated one that I got from them. And so we did the whole 2,500 round uh, shoot with this gun with no lubrication. And uh, there were a couple little bobbles in there, but I think there was more ammo related than it was lubrication related. Uh, but you guys can watch the video and get your opinion on that. Yeah, uh, let me just uh, let me let me just give a quick shout out. Enrique sure. Sonora says, "Good evening, Shane. So good to Why see you on? as a live How's guest." Going, Enrique? How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm so, seeing his name in the in the comments and and around for a long, yeah. long time. I'm sure there's yeah, I'm sure there's I you know I can see in the comments we've got some some fans of yours out there. So let us cool. know if there's anything that you guys want to know from Shane. Questions, things you want him to talk about. You know, maybe some off-topic stuff that he doesn't talk about on the channel, because you know, <laughs> we could put we'll, we'll you know we'll put the screws on him, ask him some oh, tough man. questions. Now, oh, <laughs> do you have controversies out there? Do I have controversies? Yeah, I don't think no, I don't think you do. Uh, you know, you know? I, I try to, st I guess I try to stay away from it. Yeah, I don't but, know uh, if uh, Century was happy with you when you did that 308 video. Um, yeah, my guess is probably not. Uh, yeah. I think I, I think I did send them the video, uh, mm -hmm. send them a link to it afterwards. But I mean, I was anybody that watches the video, you'll you'll agree. I think I was being yeah. pretty darn professional. No, you yeah, you're being more than fair. Yeah, I was being yeah. fair to them, but the experience yeah. was my experience. So yeah, no, no, that's what we need. We need lots of information out there. So yeah. now um, I know that some um, there's one of the questions I see people want to know, like, how do you manage SHOT Show every year? Because I know you do a lot of videos at SHOT Show. So, you know, we yeah. were talking about videos and frequency. I think when when some shows come up, you don't go to NRA, right? That's true. I have not gone to NRA yet. Um, there was also the uh, Trigger Con this past week or so. Yeah. Did you go to that one? Th no. That's Was that on the West Coast? Yeah. I want to say that was in uh, Washington. Okay. Because I know you go to, um, I think Tactical Toolbox went to that, who sometimes uh, chimes in here on the I channel in the chat. You did as well. Yes. Yes. Mike did also go. I don't know if you put up any videos. I don't know if there's any videos coming out from it yet. Um, I never even really heard of TriggerCon until like six months ago. I guess it must be new. 
I don't know. Yeah. So I haven't been there. But do you, so do you go to any other shows other than Shot Show on would, you know in your I area? Would love to, I would love to go to every show. I'd love to go to NRA. I'd love to go to Blade Show. Um, I'd love to go to you name it. I'd love to go to them all. Um, I can't even make it to the Iraq Veteran 88, 88 shoot. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've been invited a couple years, uh, and I have not been able to to find the time to go. It's it's mainly a matter of it's it's due to the fact that I got the full time job thing holding me down, right? And so mm-hmm. there's like getting away from that and uh, getting away from you know having adequate vacation time to take away from that, and but then also spend a good amount of vacation time on my family is kind of the key thing, and that's real difficult. Yeah, I've been I've been to that to the Iraq veteran thing um, once, uh, and it's you know what it's tough to go to everything, right? You know, I mean even this is what I do full time, but still I have to pick and choose okay, what yeah. things I'm going to go to, and there's all kinds of different events, and then I'm trying to like uh, for me personally because this is what I do full time, and yeah. I'm into broadcasting. I try to go to the broadcasting show this cool. year. I'm going to I'm going to be back. I'm in so I go to Vegas for Shot Show, the broadcasting show, and SEMA. See you know, what again? Uh, that's the that's basically a big car show. It's oh, okay. for all the accessories related to cars. It's not like the auto show, but there are a lot of cars there, and and you know. So I went last year, and I'm going this year, and I'm going to try to cover it from like the perspective of a gun guy, and nice. cover the vehicles that we're into. You know, mostly four by fours, pickup trucks, and Dude, awesome. uh, some military stuff. Sweet. So, but you know, that's so like you can't you know Vegas on its own, man. Going to Vegas once for Shot Show. Mm-hmm. It's like for me, I'm on the East Coast, so that's me, Lola. Lola has to get the time. She actually has to work for a living. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and I feel, and I'm laughing, but it's really tough. You know, I, yeah. I wish she did it. I wish she works for me for a living. I know she <laughs> wish she does not want to work for me for a living. <laughs> yeah. She likes it like this, where she helps because she helps to pay for this. Most of the money for what we do here on the channel comes from Lola. Yeah. And, you know, there are people, we've got like Patreon people support us and all yeah. that. You know, we've got sponsors and stuff like that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, but she has to take time off. Then we have, have to go out there. It's expensive. Everything in Vegas is ridiculously expensive. Mm-hmm. And all you do is run. I mean, I think that's why I was asking the question because you do a lot of videos when you go to SHOT Show. And I think maybe some people don't understand that, one, this is like the one big show that you do every year. Exactly. And yeah. I think that's maybe that's the reason I hit it as hard as I do because I know I'm not going to really do anything else. I mean, the, I think it was even um, Outdoor Retailer, was that it, that was here in Utah just recently that I missed that I would love to have gone to, but finding the time, even even like after work to go to it in the evening is hard to do. Yeah. Uh, so, and I, I don't even, I don't think they even allow video to be shot there. So that may be another reason I haven't even tried to go because I try to get video when I go to police. Yeah, I mean, what's the point? That's not <laughs> what I'm going there for, right? Yeah, if it's not a video, it didn't happen. Well, you know, it's good to get out there and kind of network pe- with people, especially yeah. doing what we do. It's it's important to kind of get some connections and stuff. Um, but but yeah, we want to get some content. You know, we're here to, to get some capture some content. So that's yeah. probably one of the main reasons that I um, – Hit, hit shot show as hard as I do, you know, because I know that I'm not going to have time for another show yeah. throughout the year. And uh, I try to capture as much as I possibly can there. Uh, and also, you know, I, I don't, I know there's plenty of channels that can afford to and, and choose to make it more of a fun thing and more yeah, of a baller big, event. Yeah, kind of a vacation y thing. Yeah. And it's like, good for you, man. I'm glad you can do that. For well, me, that's what, uh huh. For me, it's like, I, if I'm going to go down there, you know, I'm taking time away from my job, away from my family, right. and you know, I'm trying to use it as a as a springboard for the year for the channel, um, and so I I treat it like it's it's work, but work plus. You know, it's like it's like work plus overtime work. Yeah, and it is because I don't know about you, man, but uh, when I'm there, I'm I'm on the floor or I'm at the at the range all day, and then pick up some dinner on the way back to the hotel, and then I'm up till like eleven o'clock at night you know, getting stuff encoded and uploaded um, and, you know, dinging people's little alerts, <laughs> letting them know. Yeah, that I think, well, see, that's what I was segueing to off. because I remember from last SHOT Show, you put up a video um, because I think, I don't know if there was a little bit of pushback from people because you did so many videos, but I mean, and, and we're, we're going all the time, but I think you go even harder than we do. And, and it's because this is the, you know, I try to split it and spend a little bit more time networking and talking to people. Mm-hmm. And then I do try to get videos up. I mean, because that is the reason why I'm going there. 
mm -hmm. right? I think there's a lot like the bigger YouTube channels don't even want to go to Shot Show. Yeah, well, I think that um, was it. Uh, IV eighty eight eighty eight said that. Did yeah, they, um, I, 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 Eric didn't go. Iraq veteran did have some people out there this year, okay. um, but you know, I don't think Eric and Chad went. But they, I remember they them are saying, really busy. Yeah, I remember them saying, um, and I don't want to be putting words in their mouths, but I remember hearing them say that uh, it was for them a lot of being being there was about making connections, and they already had all the connections, and so. Um, going there and spending the money and spending the time and the resources to be there to do content was not going to be as worth it for them. And I, yeah. I totally understand that. And yeah, I mean, well, it is for me. It's like, I try to get as much content as possible, but I'm, I'm dropping business cards and I'm shaking hands and I'm talking to people and, and I'm trying to get, meet up with folks like you. If I find you and, right. and other YouTubers yeah. as well. Yeah. And, if uh, you slow down for a second. <laughs> <laughs> which yeah, that's part it's, not, of it. it's not easy to do you know what the thing is I think for, and this is me I'm not putting words in Eric or uh, Mac for military arms channel he was on here and he said that he was talking about not really wanting to go but he did wind up going I think at least for one or two days the thing is is if you're a bigger channel you have so much stuff that's coming at you that you need to do videos for if you take your time and your money and you go out to shot show and you're there you know, it's not like you're going to see the fans and everyone who really supports you and watches the videos. You're dealing with the companies. And if you True. are already connected to them, it's way more efficient to put up videos of stuff. True. You know, and it's efficient for them just as well as it is for you because, I mean, SHOT Show, Media Day, it's a separate, I don't know if people understand this. You pay to go to SHOT Show and it's expensive mm -hmm. for any company that goes there. Uh, for example, uh, Safety Harbor Firearms sponsors us and they go to SHOT Show. It's expensive. They've got to get flights, hotel rooms, pay to be on the floor. They don't do Media Day because Media Day is a whole other expense. You know, and in some yeah. cases, uh, I don't want to pretend to even know, but I, I think I've heard people spend like fifty, sixty thousand dollars just to do, just to have a slot in media day. Wow. You know, That's so if huge. you, yeah, if you think about it, it's, if it's in the tens of thousands of dollars, what's more efficient for your company? If there's a big channel like Iraq Veteran, which those guys are like, you know, them and Hickok Forty Five, and. Uh, you know, and military arms channels, those guys are sitting right up there at the top in terms of influence and amount of people that look at the channel. Right. They are they are they are media days on their own. That's a good point. You know, so yeah. it's not, you know, it's not like, it's not unthinkable that they would skip it. I totally understand it. And then they, they do go to things like NRA where they actually meet the folks and all that. And I, you know, one of these days, and I keep having it in my head that I, one year I'll skip Shot Show and I'll do NRA and or Blade, and maybe both. You know, and okay. I have that. I, I want to do, do that. If you do Blade, let me know because then I'm I'm going to that with you. Oh yeah, I want to hang with you. Okay, Blade. that'd be awesome. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll think about that. But uh, that's one thing I kind of speculate and would enjoy doing is like maybe skip the one and go to the other two. Mm -hmm. If that happens, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, you know, and there are look, there are people who are fans of what we do. I know you see them, and, and you're not you're not a small channel either. I mean, I think your your channel's been growing. You've been working, really putting in the work. Your channel's been growing. I'm sure you're not on the superstar. You don't. You probably don't see yourself on superstar status. You are known. Yeah. You know, because of the amount of work that you put in. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's. It's a, it's a tough call and everyone has to make it individually because I know there are people who are fans of yours that you see at SHOT Show, right? Yeah, periodically. Yeah, I will run into, I'll run into folks there that, uh, that recognize me from the channel. In most cases, it's other YouTubers. They'll be mm -hmm. out there on the floor and we'll recognize each other and be like, oh, what's up? You know, maybe we'll shoot a video together or maybe we'll just hang out for yeah. a second. Yeah, that's the one thing that you like. It's almost like prom or, or like your high school reunion. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good point. Because yeah. we all live, we all live in different places, and we're all so busy. Some people have regular jobs. Some people are just doing this all the time, so they're busy. And you're always like shooting videos, editing, and doing social media. And so you see these, you communicate with people, or you look at people's videos, or you share their stuff, and you're doing things, but you don't actually physically see those people until you go to these shows. Mm -hmm. But I could tell you, for us, it's never fun. We get up early. I actually don't eat. I usually drink something like we drink water, orange juice and stuff like that. We run around all day mm -hmm. and we have one meal usually around like somewhere. When when do they close? Like six? Yeah, something like six. 
Yeah, they close at six and then we're like, we try to have a meal and we go back to the hotel room. There's always parties or events people invite you to, which we would rather not go to because there's video editing to do. Some of those things we have to go to because people are like, oh, you know, we really want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And then we have kids that are on a completely different coast. <laughs> yeah, I do. You know, that we have to try to keep up with or, you know, like, hey, what's because if something, you know, we're usually like um, lately because my kids are a little bit older, we can pretty much uh, leave them on their own. I've got one that's in college now and the other one's like a senior in high school. But still, I mean, they're your kids and you worry about them. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So you're right. I mean, it's, it, it's not it's anybody that thinks hey, you're going to go to a shot show and it's going to be so fun and I'm jealous of you for going to shot show. It's like. You might feel that way the first year that you go. By your third year, you're like, please no. Please. Yeah. <laughs> can I not? Can I skip it? Yeah. I, I could mean, do so many things with the money that we spend to go to SHOT Show. I've gotten to be a pro at getting my feet ready every morning, dude. I, I'll tell you that right <laughs> Because I don't I spend imagine. a ton of time on my feet every day, and you know, I should spend more. But it's like SHOT Show is like – it's a killer on, on my feet anyway. And yeah. So it's – I yeah. have to – I have to do all this stuff like some, some powder and the last last year I discovered something called lamb's wool that you can okay. like put between your toes if you have blisters and in, and in my case it actually like it works like like a wool sock where it doesn't make your foot hot at all but oh, it, uh, I never heard of that yeah and so you can get this stuff at, uh, at your like pharmacies and stuff and um, yeah you just pull out a little bit of it kind of like cotton but it's a lot more well, it's hair so it's you know it's a lot harder to kind of pull out and then you just kind of ball it up and kind of stuff it between wherever it's sensitive down on your in your feet, like between whatever sensitive toes you have. Oh, so cool. wherever you find yourself getting the most blisters, you just kind of pack that stuff in there. And um, it's totally saved my feet last year. Not one blister all week long. Oh, wow. Okay. Lola's probably going to be looking into that right now. <laughs> Lamb as well. Yeah. So uh, I think it's Mike Bryant asked the question of whether or not our kids uh, shoot Yes, they're boys. <laughs> so they're into, and they're also into video games. So they're into guns. And yes, they do shoot. Um, I have like a few videos. You know, they they shoot with us periodically, but they've you know they're in school and stuff like that. So I try to focus on that. They do shoot. So they've shot full auto, all kinds of crazy guns. You know, when people come out there, they they do stuff with us. But um, you know. For me, what, what I want them to focus on is getting uh, educations and figuring out what they want to do with life and all that stuff before they get it. Because this is always going to be here. But they are into guns. They do shoot guns, you know, and I have tons of videos with them. So uh, what about your kids? Do they shoot? My kids, I'm asking a question like I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My kids shoot when I take them out. Now, I don't have a shooting range in my backyard. Yeah, so, you've got to you've got to work to go. <laughs> There's that. I feel bad for I you gotta, when I watch your videos. <laughs> and yeah, we got to drive away. Yeah, and then you got to take steel out. <laughs> oh, we got to yeah, we got to drag a bunch of we got to pack a bunch of steel in the car. We got to yeah. get all the you know all this. It's like anybody else for the most part. You got to pack your targets. You got to pack your your guns, your your ammo, your ears, and all that other stuff. Um, and make sure everybody's got enough water, some food, some snacks, and all that stuff, because we're going to be on the road for a little while. And then we're going to get out to the range, and then everybody's going to, you know, shoot for maybe half an hour, and then they're going to get tired of it, and so they're going to want to go back into the car. And, and everything gotta, has to get they gotta back have, up. Well, we got to have something for them to do in the car, because I'm not done. You know, half mm -hmm. an hour is not enough time for me. It's like we spent half an hour to get here. It's not so more. when you go out, do you typically take the family with you? Um, I wouldn't say typically. But probably, uh, I try to do it every couple of months, every few months. Okay. And I do it as much as they ask for it, as much as they're interested in it. My daughter seems to be more excited about it lately than even my son sometimes. And uh, uh, my wife is pretty much, you know, she'll go when I beg her to go, but it's like it's not her <laughs> thing. Yeah. She loves she loves running. She loves CrossFit, and I. I totally applaud her in, in mm -hmm. what she does because it's like yeah she supports thing. you in what you're doing obviously yeah. so yeah obviously yeah and so and i support her in the stuff that she loves so right. I, she'll come along with me to go shoot every now and then uh, i took her down to front site um a couple of years ago and she she just i mean she took to that like a fish to water which was awesome to see okay so, so she does carry um no she does not carry currently okay but uh that is that off that option is on the table and 
um, yeah, when she's interested in it, I'm not going to force her to do it. Yeah, you want her to be comfortable, you know, I think exactly. that's important with this. I always, because people say, oh, Lola does this stuff with you. How do you get, you know, how do you get her to do that? Well, yeah. I get her, you know, if, if I try to, and I have before, try to make her do stuff, that doesn't work too well. Nope, never <laughs> you know, If you want to sleep comfortably at night and eat food. <laughs> yeah, pretty you much. Know. Yeah, and as you can see, I like to eat food, so you know I don't force her to do anything. I think uh, you know you have to let her choose. And Lola, when she, I think she does way better than me, um, but she chooses to do it and she comes to it on her own. So and that's and that's what it's got to be for any shooter, in my opinion. Whether it's part of your family or or just a friend or anybody, you know, you can't you can't say, hey, why why aren't you into guns yet? You know, you should get into guns. Yeah. What's wrong with you? That's not fair. I don't think that's fair. No, not yeah. at all. So yeah. you've, you've got you've to gotta wait for that interest to spark in them, whatever it is. And it may, you may be able to help with that in some things that you do um, and, and the way you sort of portray the lifestyle of a, of a gun enthusiast and, and showing that you're not some insane person. Mm -hmm. But you also have to allow them the time and the prerogative to uh, approach it the way they want to approach it yeah. and the time they want to approach it. Yeah, also ask yourself, are you into everything that she's into? I mean, you know, if you're like Lola's into shoes. I get it, but <laughs> yeah. I don't even like going to the mall with her. <laughs> you know what I mean? And she supports me a lot. She goes with me on stuff, and yeah, she's she like, "Yeah, I'm going to the mall. I'm like, have fun." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because I'm not. I don't really look forward to that. So I think what's important, like what I think is a thing, is that I'm not giving up guns. So a woman who would not allow, like, who would get in the way of me being a gun guy and having guns and all that, that would become an issue. Yeah. Yeah. You know. That would be, that would be really difficult. That would be yeah. really difficult. And that's, you know, thank heaven. That's not where I'm at. You know, it's like my yeah. wife supports what I do. Uh, she understands. I think that's the main thing. It's not like she's overly enthusiastic about what I do. I don't expect that from her, mm -hmm. but she understands that I've always kind of had something that I need to sort of do. That's my own thing. Yeah. And, and right now it's guns and right now it's YouTube. Um, yeah. before that, it was like for many, many years, it was music. You used to be into music, right? Yeah, I, I'm, I still am. I mean, I'm not a musician. I can't play any instruments or read music, but I do enjoy making music electronically. Yeah. So, yeah. And, I, and I was like a producer and stuff like that. So. Yeah. And I still am. I still make music. Cool. So yeah. I haven't touched that stuff in a long time. And every now and then I'll pick up a guitar or a bass guitar or something and I'll kind of strum and, you know, play some songs that I used to play or used to know or whatever. But um, that's and, cool, man. I, I like that. That's that's romantic and sexy to be able to play the guitar. I wish I could. <laughs> that's how I got my wife, dude. Yeah, yeah and you were in a band. Yeah, I was I in a band. Know this. You're a rock star. <laughs> I was in a band. We were not super huge or popular or anything, but we were in a band. In fact, there was a story. I'll, I'll mention this real quick because I posted it to Facebook not too long ago. Um, There's a guy named Corey Fox who ran um, a couple different clubs in Provo, Utah. Um, mm -hmm. And most recently, it was called Velour. Um, and Corey helped to launch the careers of a bunch of different bands from the Provo area. Like, uh, yeah. you've heard of, um, Imagine Dragons, Neon Trees. Uh, Imagine Dragons, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a couple others, I think, who got their start more or less with, the, with help from Corey. And so that was like really cool. But, uh, the, the other really cool thing about the story is that, uh, Corey, I had I never knew this about him, but I guess he had um, kidney disease for a lot of his life, okay. and it was only up until very recently that he was like he had to get a kidney transplant, and um, maybe he had had some before. I think he had had one before, but it was rejected. His body rejected it, and the guy who ended up giving him a kidney was I think from the Moth and the Flame is the name of the band was they like one of the guys in that band, one of these bands that went on to become famous that he helped get started by just playing at his little club in, in Provo. Oh, cool. Yeah, so, that's cool. So so yeah. in Utah, that's like Provo is is where, is like that the epicenter of music? Um, some folks would say that for certain for certain groups. I mean, it's it's like a kind of a college town and a lot of, a lot of kids there, a lot of kids that want to go do fun stuff on the weekends or in the evenings. And so... Uh, going to see live bands is something that people will do. Um, and so that's what, you know, that's what I did at that age, you know, call it kind of college age. I was really interested in music for eh, just a, a bunch of different reasons. But um, so I kind of like played a lot with, with instruments kind of in high school and stuff, 
figured out some songs and stuff and kind of like decided that I was going to be a bass player, but also wanted to write a lot of stuff. So it, it kind of worked out because uh, the bass guitar is one of the, sort of like the key, one of the key instruments in, in the rhythm section, which is, you know, your, your drums, your bass, your piano typically. Um, and so writing songs with a bass guitar isn't, isn't a far fetched thing to do. You know, you can, you can write the whole structure of a song with a bass guitar. You can't really have all the flourishes and all the nuances that a guitar or a saxophone or, you know, horns or keyboards or whatever might have. But as far as building the structure of it, like a bass guitar and a drum set, you could pretty much create, and you know this from producing yeah. music. Yeah, that's it. That's it, man. <laughs> yeah, that's what you need. Song with bass yeah. and drums, yeah. and and kind of create all the you know the the choruses, the the the, the bridges, melodies, yeah, the melodies, the whatever. Uh, you can build it all. And so, as a bass guitarist, I, I kind of figured that out and started um, started kind of making all my own songs, writing them all just you know, with, with no recording software or, or I say software, but back when I was doing it, it wasn't about software at all. I no. had a little, uh, four track recorder. I think it was, uh, I want to say Tascam, but probably I think it might, it no. might something else, but I had a little tra four track recorder. That would Either only that or Casio. I don't know. It wasn't a Casio. It might've okay. been a Tascam, but, uh, it would only record two tracks at once. And then, um, and then you could like switch the, things to a different channel and then record to the next two layer. Tracks. Yeah. Layer over yeah, that layer over that. Uh, and so, and it, and we do it to tape decks. So that was a cool thing is like, you just buy your little cassette tapes and you could put that in there and, and record on four tracks on that. And so I use that for a lot of songwriting, uh, back in the day and, and use that in a you know, bass guitar, drum machine. And then I did like, um, I don't know, throw some other instruments in there eventually. But, uh, so yeah, that's kind of how I got started uh, doing music. And then eventually, of course, I was like, well, you know, I don't want to just record some stuff. It'd be cool if I could find some people to play with. And so started reaching out to people, found some guys and and uh, put some bands together. It was like, you know, one band here and then another band there and then uh, another band there. And one would last for a little while or we might change names or I might jump from this one to that one or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, did that for... Oh, gosh, at least five years, maybe six. And that was my thing, man. I was all, it was, it was all music. And I still don't consider myself a good musician at all. How does it feel when you think about it? Is it like the good old days or? In a way it is, but it also like when I, I have to like, I have to curb my enthusiasm <laughs> to steal a term <laughs> from uh, Larry David. From Larry. Yeah. From Larry. Yeah, I had to curb my He's enthusiasm. coming back. So, you know, you might get sued for that. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you heard about this, but they're coming back with Curb Curb well, cool, Enthusiasm. Cool, yeah. I love that show. Mm -hmm. um, I had to, I have to like slow it down when I start thinking about that stuff because I will get all the way in. I'll go all the way back into it if I give myself room to do it, and mm -hmm. that's that's no good, man. That takes up so much of my time, and it's like I couldn't possibly be a good dad and also do everything I want to do in music. And yeah, so, well, and also you know <laughs> provide for the kids, provide for the family and stuff. So. Um, you know, the, the instruments are still there and I can still do some recording here and there if I want to, but I definitely don't have time for it. So yeah, yeah I think about it. Yeah, I do kind of think about it like it's the good old days, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, I got to back off, you know, like I'll listen to some of my old recordings and I'll be like, no, 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 no. I got to turn that off and not visit. <laughs> well, no, here's no. the good news. Here's the good news, man. All right. mm -hmm. Um, the age of these old ass rockers today, yeah. at least, you know, <laughs> you're never too old so in the future you could still do this okay where the kids are all grown you know you know what that's uh, that could be true i actually told that to an old uh a guy that i played in a band with he was a drummer and um he he said oh yeah i, I sold the drum set i i don't do that anymore i don't have time for that anymore and so i'm not a drummer anymore i'm like no dude you're you're still a drummer yeah. you're just you're just not a drummer right now yeah, you know, it's still, I bet you he's still. I bet you he's still be beating out. He's still like oh. tapping out beats with his hands and all that. Oh no doubt. I'm. I mean, his yeah. desk job, whatever he he does yeah. every day. I'm sure. He, I'm sure you're absolutely right about that. Yeah. Because you'll never. You'll never get rid of those demons if you're truly no. artistic. Those yeah. things live in you. It's, you it's exactly true. It's exactly. Yeah. True. Let's hit, let me hit it up with some questions that's going on in here. Um, let me start here. How do I begin to buy knives? Or price range for beginners buying knives? That's one question. What do you okay. say to that? Like, what's the price range? What kind of stuff should you look at? 
Uh, I guess it really depends on. I, I would say tie that to your value level of other things. Like if you if you look at guns and you're like, well, I, I only want to spend, mm, you know, three hundred bucks on my handgun, or I only want to spend six hundred dollars on my AR-15, or whatever it is. You know, if if this is you and you're like, that's you know, I don't want to spend a lot of money on on that stuff, then don't spend more than like forty bucks on a knife because yeah. you probably. Mm, I would say that it's it's probably more in line with what you're willing to spend yeah. and willing to, and happy to have. Yeah. And that in mind, maybe I'll throw one out here for you. Yeah. Here's a good here's a good sub forty dollar knife that. Also, you could I mean you know you can lose knives a lot oh, easier than you can lose guns. So I've that lost is a few. definitely true. So you know, find a way to make sure that you don't lose your knives or buy cheap ones. This is the Kershaw. I can't believe I'm not thinking of the, the name of it right now. But it's model number. Don't ask me, man. 1812. 1812. Yeah. And I, re I reviewed this early this year. I like the gray color. It looks, it looks good. That urban gray. Yeah. The name is escaping me, dude. I cannot believe I can't. Believe Somebody it. out there will tell you. They'll be like, I can't believe you, late Boy Scouts. I know. <laughs> but it happens. <laughs> you, you're, still you're still transitioning from talking about rock and roll. That's <laughs> so. true. Model 1812 from Kershaw and this one is really affordable it's USA made it's it's like 40 bucks or less uh, and super super nice fun to carry I put it right up there with the Kershaw leak which is a Ken onion uh, blade and this one is a nicer version with carbon fiber and uh, what is it uh, CPM 154 steel I think also USA made but uh, in the 80 or 90 dollar range if I remember right so if if you're looking for something on the Kind of on the low end, you don't want to spend a ton of money. I think starting off with some nice USA made Kershaws, that's kind of what I would recommend you look at first. But there are lots of other ones. CRKT makes a lot of really good ones. Here's one. This is the uh, the pillar from CRKT. It's a much smaller knife. If you look at how that kind of fits in my hand, it's kind of yeah. a small knife, but it feels great in the hand and it cuts real nice. And so yeah. I've been, this one's still in queue for review. So stick around if you want to see it. Uh, okay. So CRKT, Kershaw, those are some good brands to look at if you want to save some money but have something that's really nice looking and feels nice as you're playing with it and using it um, and also is pretty well put together. Sometimes they're USA made. In the case of Kershaw, in many cases, they've got a lot of Chinese made ones as well. So if you're not opposed to that and you are, we would rather spend like 20 or 25 bucks, there's a ton of Chinese made Kershaws. A lot of the CRKT ones are Chinese made, but the design quality, in my opinion, is better than most of the Kershaws you're going to find, and they're more like um, they're more designer knives because a lot of you know um, high-end custom designers work with CRKT. They 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 just they use a lot of great designers. Um, so Ken what Onion, the? Yeah, I'm sorry. Ken go Onion, ahead. Ken Onion and a ton like uh, a ton of other uh, really great designers are are very are very loyal to CRKT. Because uh, they just treat their designers well. So as far as like good-looking designs that are, but not necessarily USA made, that are you know affordable, CRKTs and CRT, CRKT is a good way to go for that. And Kershaw also for some other stuff. Okay, so very cool. So what happens like if you want to go into the high end, and then here's a you know with that question, someone wants to know like how do you tell what's a good blade, and you know explain like the differences and things like that of how how you would know from holding one and telling that it's a good blade, and how would you tell that it's a bad blade? Okay, so there are, I mean, there's some things you could see that just visually would tell you that it's a good blade or a bad blade, or maybe that the QC on it, quality control, is good or not so good. Um, centering is one of those things. This is the paramilitary three or para three. The centering on it is, I think, about perfect. It's pretty good. Uh, the steel on it and like the fit and finish on the blade itself and how well it's uh, sort of ground and polished and the the evenness of the the actual blade the edge itself that that gives you some good signs of quality right there uh and also sort of the the way that it's constructed how how well is it put together how are the pillars looking and all, all that kind of stuff how good is the pocket clip how good is the lock on it that's a compression lock so you press down on the back on the spine right there this is like the one you have but it's a smaller version of it um, these are signs that kind of give you you know some clues about the quality of the knife so it, it comes down to sort of um, there. There are a lot of different steel types that are, that also give you clues. 
like this one, for instance, is S30V. And so that one, you know, if you find something that's S30V, more often than not, it's a pretty good knife because a maker is not going to put a really nice steel into a crappy knife. Generally. Okay, so so S30V, that's good steel. S30V is a really good steel. Um, there's a VG10 is a pretty good steel. Uh, Spider Code does a lot of VG10. There's, I think I might have one in here. No, no, not handy. But um, S35VN is also real good. Let's see, there's the um, uh, Southern Grind. I want to say that's the Spider Monkey. And I think that's S35VN. Real nice with carbon fiber and everything. Yeah. So, and those ones, but you'll spend a lot more money on some of those higher end blades. And there's the, um, the native, Spyderco native in S35 VN also. So you'll spend a lot more money on nicer steels, but you'll generally have a much nicer knife too. Um, one of the reasons when I looked at Spyderco initially and I looked at, uh, you know, sort of the plasticky handles on them, and I was like, man, that's got to be a crappy knife. Look at that plastic handle on there. You know, because I associated that with some of the like gas station knives I'd seen. Oh, I see. Okay. Follow kind of kind of similar patterns and stuff. Um, but really, the deal was that those sort of swap meet gas station knives were more or less trying to imitate what Spyderco and some of the higher end knife companies had already done. And so, because they had done so well, other people were trying to copy that. And so, you yeah, because that doesn't look too bad to me. The texturing of that looks good. But... Oh, it's nice texturing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let me log if, down there. Yeah, when you see something that feels kind of plasticky in hand, you might automatically assume, oh, that can't be very nice because it's kind of got a kind of a plasticky feel to it. But mm -hmm. that's not necessarily the case. In many cases, it's not it's not plastic. It's a fiberglass reinforced nylon. And if you look at if you were to get one of these in hand and look at the mold lines on it and how crisp and clean everything is and how um how how they how they clearly got some really good QC standards on their knives, uh, then you start to see okay I, I get why they're using this material and it's not that it's cheap, they're they're doing it to the best that it can be done, and also it makes it lightweight and easy to carry and so that's the reason why they're using that type of material. Yeah. So if money was no object and you could buy any knife that you wanted to, what's the knife that you would get to carry to carry with you and why? Um. Huh, that's hard to say, but honestly, I would probably just get a lot more Microtech Ultratech. <laughs> or, yeah, or there's you, a lot of guys, those um, Microtechs are pretty popular with people. Oh, they are, dude. They're super fun. And I, for me, when it comes to a knife or a gun or almost anything else, I think about um, there's definitely like a cool factor that goes into it. When I think about does that look cool? Does it feel cool? Do I want to own it because of the coolness of it? But then I also think is there some practicality to that? So when I get into when I look at when I see some of these really high end like uh, the the custom microtechs that you'll find out there that are sort of like the makers custom versions of it that are very nice and have like this mirror polish to the blade or whatever and like you know these exotic materials uh, I look at those and I'm like man that'd be real nice to own but I probably would never take that out and I'd never pocket it and never use it. I might just put it up on a shelf and leave it there and dust it every now and then or put it in a glass case <laughs> or something. And so practicality comes into it for me. And that's why I've never spent like a ton of money on a knife. Like the most, this is right up there. This guy right here is right up there. With the yeah, what's the, what's the price point of a, of a good microtech? I don't have one. So okay. now so, I see every, you know, I see that's the cool knife to get and they do look cool. So and there, there are lots of different knives that Microtech makes. The the uh, the Ultratex and UTX eighty five are probably they're definitely my favorite of what they make. Um, and the price point on this one, I want to say, is in the roughly around two hundred, maybe just over two hundred for a UTX eighty five. But you're they're really hard to find because everybody wants them when they come out because they're a little bit more affordable than the Ultratech, a little bit smaller, very popular. So getting a hold of a UTX eighty five is hard. Um, and you know, but uh, but the price is okay. Then if you get into the Ultratex, they're usually about uh, maybe forty, fifty dollars more than the eighty fives. Maybe sixty dollars more. It depends on what exactly you're getting with it. Um, if you look up, I don't have it here on the table, but on my channel, I've got um, um, an Ultratech called the. I call it. I think in the video, I call it the Boba Fett knife or something like that. Okay. And this is when uh, when Microtech did. 
a, a series of, and they, I think they're still doing them. They're kind of just moving the, um, uh, moving the, the designs into different blade patterns and different blade shapes and maybe different lines uh, of, of knives. But they, um, they did a bunch of stuff that was related to the Star Wars. It wasn't like called Star Wars, you know, it didn't have that name, but they, I don't think they could. Right, right, uh, yeah. You got you to pay some serious money exactly. to Lucas, or now Disney. <laughs> right, exactly. So they, they did it patterned after like lightsabers and stuff, so the handles would be black and the blades would come out green or blue or whatever, which was just totally wicked, you know? Yeah. And they had like a red one that was called the, it was called like the, what was the red one called? The SL for Sith Lord. <laughs> and then it was like the 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 one I bought was the BH for Bounty Hunter, and so it does. It looks it like the the texture and like the the engraving on the the grip itself, or the handle itself, looks kind of like Boba Fett's armor. You know? Oh, okay. So if That's you're pretty cool. if you're remotely nerdy, it, those knives just yeah just call to you, and so. so Here's that's, something. Go that ahead, is sorry. one that I bought that is on the shelf and I never carried it. You're not messing with it, right? Because that's like yeah. a collector's now. So exactly. um uh so Chris Bolas says I would carry a Hitori Hunso. <laughs> so well of course. <laughs> well of course. And then follow the bunch of Kill Bill references. <laughs> yeah. Could you could, but the question is, could you fly on an airplane with it? Like yeah. the bride did. Yeah, um, I don't know. Is there like a, a, a automatic Katori on so? <laughs> <laughs> that would be badass and probably cost a couple million dollars. Oh, yeah. So, you know, hey. so now on the other spectrum of that, here's what I wanted to talk to you about uh, before I get to some other questions here. But uh, can you talk about the uh, Chinese knives? Because I think uh, there were some comments I see in the in the chat about that, like, you know, a lot of big companies are making Chinese knives now. Like, what do you think about that? And how can, like, is, can you see the quality difference in Chinese knives? And if you can, what are the high-end ones? Oh, good point. Yeah, there are some companies that are actually based in China that are making their own designs now. So when you initially said that, I thought you meant, like, the Chinese knives that Kershaw puts out. Yeah, and, I'm t I was talking about that as well. But um, okay. because But you know what eventually happens is that those companies start, you know, they start doing their own thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's what we're seeing. And I haven't really bought any of the brands that come out of China that, that are based in China. I haven't bought any of them yet, but they look really good. Like the designs are great and I hear good things about them. I picked up one from, who was it? I can't even think. There's, there's been a bunch of different companies kind of springing up over the last few years uh, based in China again. And I picked up one of them at uh, Blade HQ one time and looked at it, kind of inspected it. I felt like I was seeing some rust spots and some other things about it that I wasn't too keen on. Um, the materials all looked good. The, the construction looked good otherwise, but I was like that, you know, I, I, I'm not sure about the yeah, these Eventually what's going to happen there is like what happened with the Japanese and a bunch of things where, you know, I mean, now I think in the beginning we were looking at Japanese stuff like what, but now there's lots of things that come out of Japan that, that automatically that means quality. Right. Well, that's going to happen tomorrow with China, but eventually, because they're the ones manufacturing stuff. Yeah. Wasn't that the line in Back to the Future? Um, yeah, I think so. That was in. You know, he was like talking about, oh, something made in Japan. He's like, what do you mean? All the best stuff's made in Japan. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, or, like or didn't, uh, didn't, Doc, didn't Doc say in the future all the good stuff's made there or something like that, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I think it was he had his like headphones, was it? I don't remember the scene exactly. Mm -hmm. he, he was like, oh, here's the problem. It's made in Japan. And he's like, what are you talking about? All the best stuff comes from Japan. Yeah. Anyways, so, um, yeah, uh, that's, that's a very good point. I think that we are. I mean, we're seeing it now. We're seeing companies like custom knife companies, or if not custom, then, you know, uh, very you know, higher end knife companies springing up in China that are producing really nice yeah. knives. So like Chris, Chris B Chris B wants to meet me to ask you about the cold steel stuff made in, uh, in Japan. Um, the cold steel stuff made in Japan. Yeah, I didn't. Um, they're, I, they're doing some stuff in Japan now. I'm trying to think if I own any cold steel stuff that's made in Japan. I have a code four that's Taiwan. Um, honestly, I don't know if I have anything from. That would probably be their higher end stuff, right? Uh, yeah, I think at the shot shows I've seen, like they've got. Uh, Almost sword-like stuff. Is that the stuff coming out of Japan? I haven't dug into that real deep, um, so I wouldn't know. That could be, and I, yeah. I think you're right that they have certain 
certain blades that are being made in Japan, but I don't know which which ones, to be honest. Oh, okay, so you'd have to look into that. I haven't been cold, following Cold Steel as closely as I ought to. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what about the other companies that are making knives in China? What are the good ones out of those, or is there a difference? You know, what's, do the companies keep up with the QC and all that when they're being made in China? Good, good question. So um, I don't, I'm not going to bag on Chinese Kershaws. I think they do okay. You know, they, the designs that come out of Kershaw that are, that are sort of the cheap Chinese ones, they're still generally pretty good quality. They do keep up with QC pretty well. And, um, you know, they're, they're a little hit and miss on designs because they just, they're a little more shotgun, you know, um, approach in, in that regard where they just, they just go for it. They just give a bunch of up and coming wannabe designers, I guess, I don't know, but they just kind of give them license to come up with whatever, with whatever they want. And so, and you've seen it in my SHOT Show videos at the Kershaw booth, sometimes it's just a giant pile of new knives from Kershaw. Like I'm talking like 30 new SKUs. And so it's like, that's a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them are good, some of them are not so great. So you gotta kind of pick and choose and, and look at the weight, look at the material. Generally the material is gonna be like an FRN handle and a HCR 13 MOV steel, uh, which is fine for everyday carry, as long as you're not paying more than like 25 bucks for it. Okay. Then what's, it the, what's the best Kershaw on your mind? That it's because like if someone just wanted to weed through this all, obviously you know a lot about it. But yeah. if someone didn't want to do that, and they were like, "Okay, I want to get a Kershaw. Which one can should they go for? That's that, that's attainable." Uh, the leak probably just the leak. USA made good steels on it. Even this one right here is again the CPM uh, 154, but they've and also, that's about how much. This one's about 80 bucks, but that's because it's got carbon fiber and that up upgraded steel. But the standard version of it, which has 14C28N steel and generally like either aluminum uh, frame or either aluminum um, covers or else like a frame lock, that one is generally 45 bucks, 40, 45 bucks. And as far as designs are concerned for just dropping in your pocket or clipping to your pocket and carrying around every day for just really general daily use stuff, um, that is one of their best designs. Uh, Ken Onion designed that, I don't know how many years ago, but uh, uh, they've sold probably a million of those knives, if not more. Okay. So, Chris says that if he was on camera right now, he would show his pride and joy cold steel. So I guess he's got a pretty badass one. I'm trying to find out from him so we can at least look it up and see <laughs> what it looks like. So tell us, Chris, what your cold steel is. That's, and I'm guessing it's a Japanese one. So, um, you know, let us know about that and we will look into that. Okay, so let me hit up uh, some stuff here. People want to know, well, who is this? Mike Bryant asks, how's the thug life in Utah? <laughs> <laughs> and then other people want to know if you were, if you were, uh, grew up in Utah, if you were always in Utah. Okay, uh, thug life, Utah, man, it's, it's popping. It's not popping. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty chill, honestly. Um, but, uh, let's see. No, I did not grow up all the way in Utah. So I moved here when I was about, uh, 12. My family moved here. Had a family of, uh, it was eight kids in my family and we moved here from Hawaii. So, um, yeah, that's where we were. We were in Laie, Hawaii. So, okay. Hawaii. Yeah. So how was that? Uh, that was awesome. It was, it was beautiful and, uh, totally different from Utah. The, um, just the way things are there, the people there, it's just very laid back. It's very chill. Um, and so moving to Utah is a very, very different environment. I mean, and one of the things about, you know, uh, the sort of the, the names, just the people's names, you know what I mean? Like you mm -hmm. grow up around all these Polynesian names and that's what you're used to pronouncing and saying and, and talk the way you're, you're talking. And then you come to Utah and you, you hear names that to you and to you and me sound like everyday American names, but this just sounds like completely foreign. Like, what kind of a name is that? You know, mm -hmm. like uh, you know, George or Terry or Fred or whatever. It's like <laughs> you know, all this stuff. It's like these are real people with these names. Like people actually yeah. have those like, names. Like mini Kanawa Loa Loa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's like what. That. I, that's and what and I'm and I'm not trying to offend anyone in Hawaii. Yeah, exactly. If I didn't get that right, I, hey, I am Polynesian, so I, I guess I have a little bit of license to offend. <laughs> There you go. Uh, yeah, I actually found that out, man. I did a genetic test, and I have some like 
I've got like six percent of my blood is Polynesian for some crazy reason. Huh. Was so, it specific as to what set of islands? Um, I don't think so. I have to look at the report again, but it's in there. It probably has something to do with me being born in the Caribbean and you okay. know that general pirate blood. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty mixed up. Like I have uh, Chinese, Indian, African, all kinds of different things. Wow. In my uh, genetic makeup. So he says that it's a. Uh, uh, hold on. He says what is it? Uh, I think it's a. Uh, I I just put a link in there. It's um, a fixed six. Inch, no, he says he has the folding fi uh, six inch Senmai blade. Um, I sent you a link of the fixed one. So, you know, I guess. I saw I, that I link pop up in, for a second, then it went away. Yeah. Uh, it should be if you click on the um, the chat over on the left. There's like a chat personally between me and you. You could probably click on it and see that. So um, you oh, can get a look at it. Yeah, it looks like a kind of like a samurai blade kind of thing, uh, which is what I was thinking when you know when he was talking about it. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, so those are you know those are cool. Yeah, the samurai. Um, those are nice because they, I think this is one of them, but you guys can correct in the comments if you want to, but um, I can't tell if that's one of the laminated ones or not, but uh, a lot of the San Mai's you see are like uh, laminated, so it's like one steel in the middle and then it's sandwiched with two other steels on the outside to give it uh, kind of the, the hardness you want on the edge, but then the, the durability you want the blade to have for harder use. Oh, no, he said the blade is folded steel. Okay, it's, it's the fixed edge, so it's the same one I sent to you. Um, I was just misreading his message. So the blade is folded steel, the blade. Okay. Okay. So it's nice. folded. Yeah. That's probably pretty nice. I mean, the price I see of this one here, I don't know if this is the exact one. Because um, this is like about 224, the one that we see here. Mm -hmm. So I can't see here whether or not it's folded steel and all that. So probably not. Because I'm assuming it would be a little bit more or a lot more expensive than that, right? Yeah, probably. Well, I would guess so, but yeah. I'll, take his, I'll take his word for it. Yeah, I mean, it's 224. There, there's probably so many different ones. That's the whole thing. Yeah, that's so. true. That's true. So, Chris, unless you send us a link, if you put a chat in the link and then we could all see it, then we could see to that specific one, you know. Um, but, yeah, that, it's, it's a pretty cool knife. Looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. So let me see what other uh, stuff that we have going on here. You want to hit up some new stuff real quick? I know we've been doing this for a while. I'm probably you're probably getting real tired at this point. We're about two so, hours in, man. Yeah, man, we're we're two hours in here. Let me, you know, let let me just hit the William Shatner thing because we talked about that. Okay. If you're interested in it? So this I got this from Fox News. William Shatner, social justice warriors stand for inequality. So William Shatner angered angered his left leaning fans after he complained about social justice warriors on Twitter. The Star Trek actor slammed today's social justice warriors for comparing themselves to 1960s social reform movement movement, and his fans weren't pleased. <laughs> but it's true. I mean... Bless his heart. Yeah, you know. Honestly, thank goodness for somebody to stand yeah. up like that. That is, I mean, I 100% agree with him. Yeah. You know, for, for these guys... Yeah, I mean, uh, that's I think what they're trying to say, like, I think people are really trying to like this modern day, you know, what do we call it? Like snowflakes and, yeah. the, and the things that they're worried about. They're trying to compare that to what happened in the 50s and 60s with the equal rights movement in America. Um, that's a completely different thing in, in my was, mind. Yeah, in my mind as well. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe that those, those exact the same challenges that folks had back then. And I wasn't there. I don't believe that those challenges are the same as what people are having today. And so for, for people to appropriate that and say, this is now that's, hey, what you experienced, that's what's going on here today in this tiny micro sense, you know? And yeah. so we're going to take this microscopic version of what happened back then, and I'm going to explode it into this, you know, magnify it into this massive thing. And now I'm going to cry and complain about how awful it is when really it's this tiny microscopic thing that you can really just kind of like say, forget about it. You know, I'll just ignore that. And that's, that's more or less, in my opinion, kind of what's, what folks are, you know, what the what the what the lay of the land is right now, and it's 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 kind of sickening, honestly. Yeah, I think I think we're getting a lot of that because um, everyone, you know, I think with social media, everyone's trying to get attention, and one of the quick ways to do it, and you know, to blow up, I guess, is if the regular media picks up your thing, and so people are taking everything and magnifying it, or even just making up, just like imagining things. I'm not saying that there's not racism in existence today, because of course there is. 
Of course. You yeah, know, everybody, and everybody, everybody agrees with that. I mean, everybody knows that there's, there is, there are racist people out there and there are people that are, you know, you know, bigoted and homophobic and all the other stuff. Right. But is it as, as huge and as overblown as people are making it out to be and as, and as, and as imminent a threat as it's being made out to be? And that's the key. You know, it's like, no, no, I don't believe it is. Yeah. And, so, and I'm not just saying that like a, maybe I live in a sheltered position or maybe I'm too busy with whatever to see any of this stuff happening, but I, I cannot – I cannot well, accept I that it's as bad yeah. as it had been in the past. Right. And I don't, you know, I think that, um, you know, I travel and, and travel with the family as well as by myself. I go around to different places. Like uh, recently, there, I think today in the last couple of days, there's stuff in Missouri, you know, in regards to like, you know, people saying that Missouri is really racist, and, you know, okay. yeah. and going all the way back there. And we were just in Missouri. Now, granted, we were in a vacation part of Missouri, but I didn't see a lot of I did see black people, but I didn't see a lot of black people, obviously, you know, <laughs> up in the mountains of Missouri yeah. and all that. But we didn't have any problems. We were out there and we were doing stuff as a family. I mean, yeah, it was, you know, it's not like, you know, I think the um, what is it? the uh, Is it the NAACP or one of these mm -hmm. groups is like actually telling black people don't go to Missouri. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, there's there's a lot. You know, I think that we're just cre we're creating things where they don't exist. Oh, my and gosh. It's, yeah. 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 I mean, to, to say something like that, like stay away from this state because we found out about one little instance of one guy in a back back alley that was bothering somebody else or yeah. whatever it is. I'm maybe well, it was I think Missouri is also trying to change their like uh, like balance out their hiring practices, you know, and, okay. and, and trying to change the law okay. in terms of there's a there's, a, you know, in lots of places, there's laws that are on the books that prevent the most qualified people from getting positions. Right. You know, yeah. there's a. Uh, like, it, um, what, do you, what do you call that again? The uh, affirmative action? Is that yeah, for this, yeah, there's affirmative action laws and stuff like that. And, you know, I mean, do we really need those today? And in some cases, are those making things worse, right? I think in certain, like when it comes to, for example, to police officers, uh, firefighters and things like that, these things are making it worse. We're not getting the most qualified people to do things. We're, we're going in like by quotas. we got to hire so many women, so many men, like men, so many people of this color that color and all that instead of thinking about who's qualified yeah you know and yeah. that's the that's the way that we need to look at it like i said i don't think that everything has been solved in america but mm -hmm. you know maybe people you know if you went to other countries you'd see a lot of what i'm talking about you know i've lived in 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 africa i've lived in nigeria yeah you know i mean there's a lot worse things going on and black people in america are not suffering like uh, people of color around the world Right. Are suffering right. at all. As a matter of fact, um, you know, there are black people in America that are doing very well. I'm not saying all of them, but there's also white people in America that are extremely suffering. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. it's true. So we've got to figure out how to get over these things and not, you know, and not turn to that every time we're not getting our way and getting what we want, I think. So one point about the, the sort of the affirmative action or the quotas or whatever, I think that in one sense, you know, um, in regards to maybe a police force or something like that, I think that there is an argument to be made when you say that you know the 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 police force should maybe represent the demographics of the immediate area, you mm -hmm. know. And so, if you you know if there are X number percentage of white people and X number of black, X number of whatever, you it would be nice for us to be able to say that the the police force, the people that are sort of policing that population, are made up of the the same people. Of that population, right? It, that would be saying? nice. If I think could. that would be very nice if we could have that, but we have to. I think that we can only have that if we have the qualified people to do it, because that yeah. is number one. You've got to be qualified. You've got to be. Um, and then the people the right, in that right area have to be job. willing to do that, right? I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like you can say, "Well, we're just." Where are you going to get these people from? You know, you can't coerce people into it. So you got to yeah. say. You, know, you can't go to, to another state or another county and grab like, no. so let's say you have a, a black population somewhere, but yeah. the black people who live there don't want to be police officers for whatever reason. And so they're not applying on mass to do that. You can't go somewhere and like grab some other black people and say, okay, your asses have to go over here. Because they have to be representing the community community yeah. and race is not necessarily the thing that makes you part of that community. Right. It's like your background, your association with that area is what makes you part of that community in my opinion so it's like yeah you've got to be 
invested in your area and in your immediate neighborhoods and your town. And that is what has got to be what drives you to want to be part of that police force, for instance. And if that ends up being, I would love to see that being, you know, equally represented, representative of the demographics of that immediate area, but not at the expense of bringing in people from somewhere else and not at the expense of bringing in people that are unqualified. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. I know it's a complicated subject, you know, um, yeah. and it's probably not something that we want to get in deep to now. It's getting real late. Uh, before we wrap this up here, man, you have any projects coming up, some cool guns you're going to do stuff with you could show us? Yeah, sure. I know uh, I'll, pull, I'll pull out that. something here too. Yeah, M&P 45 Shield, that's brand new. Just got okay. that. Okay, recently. very cool. Yeah. That's a good bit. Um, this one right here is the car uh, S9. I don't know if anybody's seen the S9 line from car, but uh, I'm liking it so far. I actually haven't even shot it. I just got it like last week or something for TNE, and that is going to be shot, and that's going to be demonstrated pretty soon. But so far, love the trigger pull on it. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, and Steyr L9A1. Now, that's, that's cool. I like Steyr. Yeah, so I'm going to be shooting yeah. this a good bit more. And so what that's else? the full size style I'm taking it, right? What? That's correct. Okay. That is the full size. Here's the commander size lightweight Ruger 1911, SR 1911. Very nice. Uh, better than either of the 1911s you and I shot. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, what's the break in, Shane? Oh, break -in <laughs> is there a break in? Break in was zero on this one. It's just okay. been great since I got it. So, yeah. More to come on that. Yeah, those high-end 1911s tend to have some break-in time. So, that's I, I hate that. Yeah, Ruger SP101 with Badger grips. Oh, that looks good. Nice and yeah. beefy. This is the. Um, yeah, I like the look it? of that actually. I do too. It's the um, oh, purple walnut they call it. But does that look purple to you? No, but it look it does look walnutty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they call it purple walnut, and it's super cool looking. It's like yeah. their matte finish one. I can't remember what they call it. Yeah, that's a nice mix of uh, of wood and steel because even the steel has a matte finish to it, brushed aluminum kind of yeah. brushed steel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. I've been shooting this a little bit. I'm going to be shooting it a lot more, get some videos out on that. So that's it for pistols. Uh, lots of knives coming up, of course. And then for the rifles, uh, well, this is a pistol, Technically a pistol, as it is right here. That's the Anderson, and this is kind of a custom build with uh, the Elftman trigger in it. I've got a video coming up on that. Okay, very cool. Elftman sure. makes some high-end triggers. Have you shot them? Elftman triggers, yes. Yeah, that, dude. That's an adjustable, right? Um, if it is, I haven't tried adjusting it yet, okay. but it is super nice. This yeah. is the match, the match trigger. And it is, I love it, dude. Freaking love that trigger on that gun. So there's that one coming up. I'm going to talk more about the SRD556, the can that I have on that. I'm going to talk more about the carbon fiber handguard from Brigand Arms and uh, going to do some hiking, some hunting with that to get a sense for how it does in the outdoors, put it through some practical use and kind of see how it holds up. Of course, we're going to put the Stag Arms uh, 308, the Stag 10. I'm going to put this through the ringer, shoot that a lot. I've got a lot of rounds coming for that. and. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Lastly, so you've already put a lot of rounds through it. You're saying, right? No, I've put Not just okay. two rounds through it, but we're gonna put a lot of rounds through it. Okay, looking forward to seeing what you think about that. Yeah, and then here's the um, the FX9 from Freedom Ordnance and ClassicFirearms.com, and this is pretty much in the final configuration that I'm gonna have it in, and this thing is a beauty. I just love it, man. I'm probably gonna. I may actually seracote this at some point. Okay. That may be my first Cerakote project. I haven't so done So that's like a, a, a see-through Glock magazine on there? Yeah, that's the ETS mag on that one. Okay. Yeah. So is that getting a uh, last round bolt hold open? Yes. There it is. Okay. Is that cons Do you find that to be consistent? Have you yeah. done a lot of shooting yeah. with it? Thousand rounds. Thousand oh, okay. And it was consistent? Consistent and perfectly reliable to my memory. So, thousand rounds through that gun. The video is shot. I may get some supplemental footage for it at some point, but uh, the final review video on that is coming up. And um, I'll just tell you this, man: it's thumbs up, hundred percent positive. Very lightweight, very fun nine millimeter AR-15. Love it.
Sweet. Okay, because I know people are looking for something that looking for something like that, but they want that last round bolt hold open, and it's yep. not consistent uh, across the different things that are out there right now. I've seen that. I've seen that, and so uh, yeah, I've actually shot some other AR AR nine types, and of of the ones I've tried, of the ones I've seen, this is the best yet. So oh. I'm sure there's some other really good ones out there, but I love this one. Okay, very cool. So now, um, you know, I, I want to sh share something with you. We've got a bunch of, you know, people want to know if we're still doing like uh, regular, you know, quote unquote review videos. So, and we are, and we're working on stuff. We've got a lot of stuff that's shot and things that are in the line to be done. So now here's something, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but this is, let me lock it on here. This is the Thompson Center Encore. Now this is a pistol. Now here's the cool thing about this, man. These are modular. What? Yes, modular. So now what do I mean that it's modular? Basically, this is the gun right here. Oh, so this nice. is another one. And this is basically the core of the gun. And nice. what you can do is that there's lots of different, you can change calibers and there's lots of different cal uh, uh, there's lots of different calibers and barrel lengths and stuff like that and stocks. So for example, I think this is a 308. So I'm not sure I have to look closely and it's kind of dark in here, but you can go from a pistol to a rifle. I think that's the way that you can legally do it. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. not, I, I think that's the way I'm not hundred percent sure right now, but I think that's the way you can't, I don't think you can go from rifle to, um, to pistol. But so for example, you know, we've got some different barrel lengths and stuff like that. So with stocks, and all the different combinations that you can get, like, uh, you know, there's all these different stocks. So there are people out there that are buying these um, these Encores, and then you can change it. Now, obviously, it's like a single shot thing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it breaks open. You know, so it's a really cool, like, kind of, like, survival thing that, you know, it's one round, breaks open, you put it in there. You can change it, go from one barrel to another. And change the rounds and all that and then since it's kind of like you know how the uh, SIG P320 which yeah. I guess is going through some recall stuff right now I think with one oh, of the I didn't know that. Elements. yeah um, if we had time we would cover that but probably another another day we'll do it so this because this is basically your gun you can put a different stock on here you can put different barrel lengths and do all kinds of things um, these they're not they're not they're not cheap you know so mm -hmm. But they're very popular. There's some guys out there that really enjoy buying these and doing all the different combinations and building up things. So we're working on covering that. Now, what do you think about that? That looks cool, man. That looks yeah. like a lot of fun. Yeah. So, you know, we like anything that's like Lego, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. Anything that's like Legos and modular. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That so we're like working on that. Sweet. Yeah, so that's what we're coming out with. Okay, man, so before I go here, um, any things that you want to plug here in the um, end, places you want to tell people to go find you? Oh, man, uh, so facebook.com slash the late boy scout is where you can follow me on Facebook, and I post uh, you know um, deals that I find up there sometimes. Uh, some of those are affiliate deals, but uh, I'll post that stuff up there as well as articles that I like. Uh, Instagram, of course. Instagram is at late boy scout not the late boy scout just late boy scout is on instagram yeah uh, twitter at the late boy scout and then youtube of course slash the late boy scout is where you'll find all my stuff um i don't know man i could probably say a lot of other things about a lot of other things but yeah, yeah. i say definitely subscribe to the late boy scout if you haven't he's working really hard doing some really good reviews and stuff he's the kind of you know the kind of guy that you would appreciate checking out his channel and the and you know the information that he brings to you thanks man appreciate so that's what i would say and i want to thank you for coming on the show man we really appreciate that thank you dude and yeah. to anybody that if i'm gonna probably mirror this video on my channel to so to all the guys that are watching on my channel do subscribe to hank strange and follow what he does very entertaining and very knowledgeable and uh really enjoy chatting with him so thank you man i appreciate that so it's been you know you've been like we've been friends for a while so yeah yeah that's absolutely a, you know, that's a good thing all right and i want to like remind people to share this you know we we are putting this on itunes so definitely go check out itunes it's the uh who moved my freedom podcast so you can search for that or hank strange on itunes and uh you know if you're watching this now share it tell your friends about us that we're doing this stuff we will be back tomorrow i have no idea it's coming up tomorrow, <laughs> but we will be back. I want to thank everyone that's watching and left all those comments. If you've got more questions and stuff, leave it on the video. I'm sure Shane will check it out. I'll try to answer stuff. 
And yeah, I want to, yeah, thanks for that. And I want to thank the folks that sponsor us. That would be Safety Harbor Firearms, Rand CLP, uh, Andrews Custom, and Big Daddy Guns. Big Daddy Guns. We're in the Big Daddy Guns studio. They actually put up like the nice backdrop for me and all that. They were working in here and they give us, you know, the broadband and all that stuff that we're using here. We want to thank them as well as the people who uh, support us on Patreon. We're Patreon slash Hank Strange. Do you have a Patreon, Scout? Uh, I do have a Patreon. I don't really push it, but it okay, is. Okay, what is it? Uh, it's probably just the late Boy Scout. Yeah, check out the late Boy Scout and help support him as well, man. Sure. You know, he's working hard out there. I know he doesn't want to push it, but I'll do I, I did it. All right, cool. Yeah, it's on me. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Peace. <laughs> See you guys.